check, 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 check. This is, this is a mic check. Another episode of West Side Tyler Live. How the hell are you all doing? I hope you are doing great. I'm a little exhausted. I just got back from the gym. I was doing deadlifts today. My deadlift level is very low. I am a weak boy. 36 means I'm basically dead, and I cannot seem to crack 300 on deadlift to save my life. I can deadlift 275. Like eight times in a row, one time, done after that. Pull-ups, two. Dead hangs, a couple. Five. Close grip. Very sad. Very sad to say. How are you guys doing? Like I said, my name is Tyler. Tyler Bell. I am a horror author, writer, creator of the long-running horror and dark fiction podcast, The West Side Fairy Tales, and... Uh, The host of this, West Side Tyler Live, a small but scrappy as fuck uh, live stream channel where we talk about art, politics, culture, and all sorts of other interesting things to wrest the conversation away from the cringe people that have been leading it for like the last 10 years. They drive me crazy on both sides of the aisle, but especially on the right. And with all of that said, today I think we've got a very good show coming up for you this was the viewer request show from the absolute moment i started this fucking uh stream uh one of the first videos i ever made that went like bigger than what my stream should have normally been capable of was a video i made on shadowversity being cringe i didn't know who he was at the time i didn't know i found out (laughs) and uh Somehow the man manages to not just be cringe in one direction, but in like almost every single one that he chooses. It really comes down to the fact that he's a charlatan. And like all charlatans, all the truly great ones at least, he has blessed us with completely unselfconscious works of art, uh, which include his uh, prolific high school doodle uh, pencil drawings, his now even more prolific Supergirl prono fan art with his wife's face stapled onto it crudely. And of course, what we are going to be getting into tonight, his debut novel, Shadow of the Conqueror, book one of the Chronicles of Everfall series. Also, quite possibly, for reasons we might get into, book final. (laughs) I'm going... To uh, do this literally as above board of a review as I can. I'm going off the top of my head. I'm not doing... I I have a few samples, audio samples, that I collected from the podcast. Or not the podcast, from the audiobook. um, Just to articulate a few little ideas that um, popped off. But I did not go into this like Ben Shapiro taking a fucking notebook into the Barbie movie. Because, I don't know, he just... I don't even have a good joke for that. That the, the joke is taking a notebook into the Barbie movie. But I think what I'm really trying to get at, I took this fucking book at face value. I really did because I do respect the effort it takes to write an entire book. It is legitimately a difficult thing to do even if your book is dog shit. Finishing the fucking thing is like legitimately an effort into and out of itself. And with due respect to the effort of actually writing the book start to finish, I as a critic will take that book in without uh, just immediately trying to fucking nitpick every minor flaw with it, which gives me the added benefit of being fucking shocked numerous times throughout this. But we're going to get into that in just a bit after I finish my intro. But don't worry, that is going to be the primary fucking driving factor behind tonight's show is going to be me giving my thoughts 
opinions and uh, some of my ideas on how the uh, Chronicles of Everfall book one and the greater series potential could uh, be possibly improved with um, the smallest amount of editorial oversight by somebody that even gives two shits about whether or not the book looks good. We'll get that to a second. Um, when I'm freestyling all of that, I'm going to try to be um, just talking off the top of my head. So there's going to be large chunks where I'm not paying attention to chat, but don't worry. At the end of my spiel, when I'm kind of wrapped everything up and kind of encapsulated my vibe and my opinions on the novel, I'm going to go back to chat. I'm going to start taking your guys' questions and I'll make sure to go over those. So if you're going to ask questions, try to hold on to them until the question time. Please may, feel free to make statements and try to catch my attention if you want. That's okay. But if you ask your questions early, I will fucking forget them. And you'll have to just ask them again because I'm not going to scroll all the way back up to chat if other people remember to ask their questions at the right time. Because I'll be answering them and I get distracted easily and I'll fucking forget um, but yeah, that'll all come after the end of the introductions and after the end of the introductions, I'll talk to chat for the first time and then we will kick it off. But like I said earlier, my name is Tyler Bell. This is my program, Westside Tyler Live. We've been going for an entirety of like two months, maybe two and a half. I can't really remember. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm popping off right now. I never thought that my road to 1000 subscribers thing would really like ever get bigger. I knew it would. But also, I didn't really believe it. But look, we're sitting at 473 out of out of 100. So just 27 more fucking subs till we hit the, our first minor goal um, of 500. And then I can take super chats. And um, we're probably going to start having to add moderators and shit. Because look at this fucking chat, man. You guys are popping off and like talking to each other. Literally a month and a half ago, I would have one or two people that same name all the way down through the entirety of the night. So thanks, everybody, for coming out, hanging out, and uh, enjoying this. But with all that said, if you are enjoying this community, hey, you have a chance to be a part of it with our first celebration for a sub-micro goal, 500 subscribers. And uh, when we hit the 500 subscriber goal, I'm going to close the poll that's connected to it. There is a poll in the community tab. Uh, of four possible activities I will do as a thank you guys to hitting my first 500 subscriber goal. It's going to be either I'm going to cook an Asmund steak, I am going to do community uh, viewer decided speed drawing challenges, I will do community decided uh, dramatic readings or impersonations of text. Obviously it can't be anything like racist or stupid guys, don't do anything like that. That's dumb, that's TOS. Um, and then the last one was, uh, I will read chunks of, um, unreleased material from my various books. If you guys want to hear some stuff like that, or maybe even some stuff from released books, uh, that just aren't available without paying. So you can pick one of those four things. Currently, the last time I looked, the community speed drawing challenge was in the lead, um, knocking Asmongold's, the Asmund stake out of the lead and tying it with um the dramatic reading things of course my audiobooks in the last i just had to fill out a fourth one i'm not surprised that you guys don't hear me read my fucking book but go, go fuck yourselves anyway um with all that said too you only have 27 subscribers left which we're probably going to be hitting tomorrow to join the discord and get your special blue stream day ones roll and forever be immortalized as a true hipster in the fucking West Side Tyler canon, you'll be a, a fucking cool guy. Um, it doesn't do anything. No real special privileges other than I can at all of you and be like, fucking congrats. You you made it in. But after we hit 500, and if we hit it while I'm asleep or something, or I'm busy, then it's until I can get to it. So, hey, you might even be able to sneak in if it's like 535. But if you want to join the Discord, you should do that anyway. Discord.com slash the invite code. That is in the episode description of this live stream. Check it out. Also, if you want to know anything more about me, my work, if you're like, who the fuck is this guy, this fella talking all this shit, who does he think he is? Uh, I bet he's terrible at writing. I bet you I'm fucking not, you motherfucker. I'm actually mad good at it. 
And you should check out all my uh, my work and stuff. Westsidefairytales.com. That's got links to all of my merchandise, my work, my podcast, of which all of the episodes are online for free. I make money through advertisements on that. So just go ahead, give it a listen, check it out. And then pop back into the Discord and tell me what you think about it. Also, don't forget, shout out, motherfucking VOD gang. Always good to see you guys here. Um, even though you couldn't be here with us tonight, it's nice to see you popping through. I see you, even though you're in the future and I'm here in the past doing this stuff live. And you're, I don't know, eating your fucking oat milk and cereal and just wishing that you were a part of the stream. But hey, you're, you're, you're part of the stream. Shout out Vi Gang. Comment Vi Gang in the, in, in the comments and I'll like that. And then it'll be like we're, we were here anyway. Also, if you're new to the stream, this is just a challenge I do to you. If you like, think you might like this shit or not, hit the like button or the subscribe button right now. If you don't like the fucking podcast, you don't like me after I get into this a little bit, then you can unlike it. But I would hate for you to be enjoying yourself and then fucking forget to like and subscribe. And then who knows? I'll be fucking out in the middle of the algorithm. YouTube doesn't make money off of me yet because I'm not ad monetizable. I don't have them thousand subscribers yet to get the YouTube ad bucks. So they don't give a shit about me. And it might be years, decades even, before we see each other again. So go ahead, hit the like button, subscribe to this fucking stream. And uh, with all that said, I'm going to say hi to chat. And then we're going to start talking about um, Shadiversity's debut novel, <laughs> Chronicles of Everfall, book one, Shadow of the Conqueror, also known as uh, Dalen's Day Out. <laughs> Middle Sludge just watched the Kirk Patty Cake review of the book. So excited to see your take in comparison. How, what, what did Kirk Patty think? Damn, we got a lot of people waiting. That number always goes up and then it goes down. It says like fucking 35 people. And then I turn the stream on and it's like nine. I think it's just everybody that looks at it before I turn it on. It is definitely going to be a video. Oh, absolutely. Hype. Thank you, fanatical tactician. General site interested in hearing Tyler's thoughts on this book. Thank you. Late stream hype. Shut up, Shep. <laughs> why mercenary i don't know why shad even thought writing his character the way he did was a good idea i i, I don't either I, I have i have speculations and i'll get into it as we go he wrote dalen like a video game character <laughs> yes i'll check 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 mike check premise of the scoring when it tries and fails to beat it doc m i think i just saw a big ass mosquito in my room but i don't want to go look for it lest i miss stream stuff see that's the kind of dedication i respect that's why doc is a fucking mod that, and I can't see his posts if he doesn't have mod status. <laughs> oh, hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Let's see. More Shad hate. Let's go. Don't be mean to, to Shad. I don't even believe myself when I say that, but don't, don't be mean to him. Um, unless you have to, if, if you feel you need to. Did you know Shad literally went, it's curious how nobody cared about my conservative views until I started voicing them. <laughs> True. Biggest thing I ever wrote was 50k words. That was years ago and haven't done anything like it since. I think my current podcast season that's running right now is 210,000 words. Fucking super long. No, you need to nitpick so that he records an eight hour response to you. I will. I just did it. I, 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 I couldn't spiritually take like specific notes to call out all of these like minor things. Because first off, it was relentless. I do have a lot of things I remember. And as I start talking about it, I'll really get into it. I reckon you'll either get 500 by tomorrow or the day after guaranteed. I think I'll probably wake up to like five, 505, 510, but maybe not. Shout out to the days of just Cornell and I in the chat. Chat's bloomed like a fungal growth in a Petri dish. It has. It has. Pausing the stream to go eat. I'm going to catch up when I get back. Hell yeah. Two times speed life. Re. Is that for NaNoWriMo? Uh, 50K was the goal for the that month rating challenge. Jesus Christ. National, National Writing Month is insane. Her patty cake thought it was terrible and amateurish, if I remember correctly. Well, she's basically fucking right. Been a little bit since I saw her review. I've read a few excerpt sentences and knew it would be bad. DBDU5L. I've never seen this guy before. I'm going to try to stay while being sick. I do love myself a beating of a dead horse. Well, we're about to turn him into fucking uh, just a little bit, just a little bit of ground beef tonight, right? Ground horse meat. Give me, let me close this up. Uh... Well, and yeah, new, new that, thank you very much. Subscriber. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the West Side, Victor Villarreal. Boo. Okay, so.
<sighs> introductions basically done. We are going to, I just need to bring up one thing real quick. In the background, I think I put it in the wrong folder, but it's all good. Should be random assets. And then I have these screen recordings in here. Okay, good, good, good. Good, 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 good. Okay. So, um, and I'm also going to bring up his uh, synopsis here. Shadow of the Conqueror, Shad Brooks. Oh, my God, I keep forgetting there's a fucking comic. Um, here we go. Okay. This shit is fucking madness. Um, I, has everybody seen... The cover for this, I feel like I got to bring up the cover uh, also. Let's see, open image and new tab. I almost want to make this a, uh, nah, I won't do that. But I will bring this up real, real quick um, down here before we get everything going. Because the cover is just kind of tremendous in its own right anyway. So, this is uh, Shadow of the Conqueror by Shad. And Brooks, this is the uh, this is the cover right here. Uh, as you can see, this here is Dalen Malaria, Dalen Dalen Valerian. I can't remember. Um, this is Karkuk. I can't remember. This is his friend who is also a, a guy. And uh, this is a rape victim. So we will we. <laughs> I gotta not laugh the entire time. Okay, so Shadow of the Conqueror is the debut novel from YouTube, uh, fallen YouTube royalty, uh, known lol cow, and uh, conservative fail son darling, Shad M. Brooks, brother to Jazza Brooks, uh, also known as Jazza Draws. Jazza does art, I can't remember exactly. Um, they're Australian people. Um, Arik, thank you. Arik is the guy's name. Um, he is a dude that is famous for being a sword guy, a sword fellow on the internet. Um, Shad has been on YouTube for a billion million years. He is a, um, a growing more and more and more so a laughing stock of the HEMA community, which he orbits but does not, I guess, apparently participate in. I haven't seen any fights from him, so he's kind of like a guy that does boxing instructing while never actually boxing or having ever boxed in his life, which is, you know, it is what it is. At some point in the last few years, um, Shad did the same thing that a lot of people on the internet have done, uh, which is give up on his sort of like piddling, it's okay, but it doesn't really grow my channel type content that fits perfectly in the algorithm in pursuit of those sweet, sweet grifter bucks um, by starting to espouse all sorts of crazy ass right wing um, bullshit and do right wing bullshit videos. Now with Shad specifically, I think he is legitimately delirious where he does not actually think he is a grifter. I think Shad is actually maybe a little unwell um, or just completely fucking delusional. I, I, I was giving him the benefit of the doubt before I read this book and I will get into it, but I think he legitimately has drank his own Kool-Aid. I think most of what he is as a person maybe has dribbled out of his ears onto his beautiful blue or red tunic and uh, he's gone a little crazy. Um, like a lot of the people in the comics gate sphere, which he's a fan of and a friend to, he has decided to do, um, the Thanos meme. I'll do it myself and start trying to make art. That is, uh, a term we recently found out superversive as in it is, uh, it tries to conform to a literally conformist view of, of society, a conservative view um, representing specifically uh, right-wing Christian West morality, right? Um, and at some point during that, he wrote Shadow of the Conqueror, which is his answer to, I don't know. I, I've seen him talk about this book a few times. From what I can gather, it's his answer 
to a lot of issues he's had with a lot of different things. And he just thought that he could address all of them. It's his, he wants to see sword fighting done his way. He wants to see fantasy done his way. But mostly, like all artists, he really wanted a platform to talk about his weird as fuck ideas. Which, as a weird fuck, I can really get behind. Um, I'm going to read the uh, back of the book, so to say, off Amazon here. And then I'm just going to start talking about it. I think that's enough intro. This book is, like I said, Shadow of the Conqueror 1, Chronicles of Everfall. <laughs> Paperback uh, released July 1st, 2019. So this is like a four-year-old and some change book. I've never heard of it until I started this stream. I, I barely knew who Shad was. It's just one of those things. Like, oh, he's got a million subs. Like, yeah, there's a billion people on Earth. And I just don't watch... I just don't watch sweaty, chubby guys fucking fuck around in their backyard with swords as much as I used to anymore. Because the one king, uh, the quick draw, uh, fucking quick draw Jabba or whatever the hell they called him, they used to cut all the water bottles in half. Like, I don't think he releases content anymore, and he was my go-to. Now that he's gone, market's kind of dried up for me. But this was released, like I said, July 1st, 2019. Who better to fight? Hold on, hold on. Who better to fight back the darkness of the world than the one most respons- the one responsible for most of it? Dalen. Once known as the Great Bastard, the scourge of nations, Dalis the Conqueror, has lived in hiding since his presumed death. Burdened by age and tremendous guilt, he thinks his life is coming to an end. Unbeknownst to him, he's about to embark on a journey toward redemption where his ruthless abilities might save the world. Many battles await with friends to be made and a past filled with countless crimes to confront, all while trying to keep his true identity a secret. Indeed, it might be too much if not for the f- fabled power awaiting him. Everfall is a world of perpetual day where continents float in an endless sky. If one jumps from the continent, they will fall for many hours before returning to the same place from which they fell. Sky ships rule the air, powered by shining sunstone and industrial darkstone. A leg- legendary order of knights bears mystical powers which they use to hunt out the dreaded shade, monsters that regular people turn into if trapped in darkness for the length of a fall. It is a world of enchanted swords, merciless monsters, mythical knights, and hard magic, filled with tales of wonder and adventure. It feels like there should be another sentence there at the end, but also fewer sentences before. And this kind of this kind of encapsulates almost the entirety of of Shadow of the Conqueror. So I'm going to start with just the basic plot synopsis. We're going to hop into this. Once upon a time, there was a guy named Dalis, Dalin Navarin. I fucking swear to God, I think that's his last name. I don't care if it really is. Um, He had his children killed in front of him. His children and his wife were killed for reasons I can't remember by the aristocracy, just general, the aristocrats in the country he lived. During this book, there are a ton of countries mentioned. None of it fucking matters. It is the most uninteresting fucking world map. It doesn't make fucking sense. There are, I listen to this a lot, and I cannot remember fucking anything almost at all about the way that the world looks, except for it's all neoclassical and Baroque style buildings, which are words I think he heard on Twitter and just threw in here. But Dalen, Dalen was a guy with a wife and kids and his wife and kids were killed by the aristocrats, the aristocrats. And, um, so he killed all of the aristocrats by getting like a rebellion together or something. And then he started just killing them all. I remember more, about him killing them then i can remember how he got the army together to do it i don't particularly care about it because it's not particularly well done um he 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 kills all of them and so then he takes over afterward well, 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 what you well, find well, out very well, shortly subscriber. after the beginning of this is that what shadow or what dalen the conqueror is is a fantasy allegory for quite literally joseph stalin um, I can't, or, or at least if not specifically Joseph Stalin, just any communist dictator who also did 
some mass murdering on the side. But communism comes quite directly into it in the narrative at a later point, and it's amazing. This is gonna this is it's a it's a tangled web of just like two strings. So I will simultaneously be repeating myself a lot while also confusingly returning to the same point, which happens consistently in this book. Uh, after he overthrows the aristocracy because he's the smartest boy in smart fuck land, he takes over all of the other countries basically and like annihilates their aristocracies. Put a pin in that. A lot of them are back by the end of the book for reasons. Um, during this point, he institutes his own economy, which we find out over the course of the book uh, was a sort of like confused, half understood version of a planned economy um, that's never really gone into detail on how it works, which is astounding for this book. Um, and he kind of gets like bored with power and he's sad because his wife and kids are dead. So he just starts raping the fuck out of all kinds of little girls, which is just a plot point in the book. I didn't think. I thought it would be something that was like mentioned, like you know, in a Game of Thrones books, where it's like he is John, John the Childbreaker, the most disgusting. If, if it weren't for the protection of the king, that foul beast would have been slain years ago. His predilection is children, and long were the screams heard from his chambers. Millions of children gone in the dark of night. Something like that. Nope. Fuck you. It's like the main part of the second half of the book. We'll get to that. We'll get to that because first, first off, as important of a detail as that is, it's not mentioned for a while. And we've got we've got miles to go before we sleep in this fucking book. I'm not I'm just trying to get his background story kind of hashed out because otherwise I'll have to start trying to figure out where it was explained later in the book, and that's just not worth it. He does all this heinous shit, everyone gets mad at him, and then they depose him. At around 65 years old. So he has been running the government of the world, which is Everfall, which is always daytime. And it's made out of floating islands. And you can fall off the edge of them. And then there's sky ships that float between the islands. It is what it is. Um, he is 65, gets deposed, and everyone thought he died in a attack from uh, Renarin something, I think. I can't remember the guy that led the fucking revolt, okay? <laughs> we pick up at what I just call part one, Dalen's Day Out, right? So he is 85, and you start the book with the the framing device, the narrative framing device that lasts throughout the entirety of, of Shadow of the Conqueror, which is the longest, most boring fucking suicide note you'll have ever heard in your life and would make no sense if read top to bottom because it all has something specifically kind of to do with articulating into the chapters ahead kind of... It's way too long. And it's also not long enough technically as well because it's... This is supposed to serve as my confession... I am Dalis, Dalen Bababa, also known as Dalis the Bastard or Dalis the Conqueror, and I have sinned. And you will hear this, I think, 10,000 times during this book. I want to die because living is worse than death to me. Living is the worst punishment ever. And so Dalen, being an 85-year-old guy who's too old to fucking creakle crack around anymore, uh, leaves his house. He's been living in a remote village of people in a world where there are newspapers and drawings of this guy. He's one, probably, arguably, the most famous human being alive. He goes into hiding at 65 at the height of his power after a coup against him. It's literally like Joseph Stalin, Hitler, in a world with newspapers, Vanishes into the countryside. Crazier things have happened. I digress. He's been living there as a tinkerer or an engineer, something like that, for 20 some odd years, just doing a basic engineering shit. We find out from this point and going forward that for no real reason, 
uh, other than basically what I assume is supposed to be the will of God, Dalis is fucking the biggest Mary Sue of all time. I hate using that word, but this one time I think it actually works. He is the smartest engineer to have ever existed. He specifically, while conquering the world, also developed all of the most major technological advancements in the world. So every like five steps, he looks at something. He's like, ah, yes, the fucking automated dildo. Before I grows to power, no one knew you could strap light stone to a dildo and make it go like a steam engine. Before that, the nation's women were dry as a riverbed, but I invented the super dildo. Over and over and over and over again. I lost track of slash did not fucking care about all of the stuff he made because he talked about it first. This is the thing that just assume it happens every time I'm talking for the duration of this book. Fucking Dalen will see a thing and not really describe it as being a cool thing, right? A lot of this is like really close third person narration. Dalen's fucking wandering around old creakle bones during the first chunk of the book and looking at shit and like, there's no reason for you to care. There's no inciting incident, by the way, in this novel. There really is no inciting incident other than him deciding to go kill himself. And Shad does not have the skill or depth of like being to make that like a fast like if that was if this was like some old dour russian novel like the story begins with an old man ready to go kill himself by throwing himself off the edge of the world i'd be like this is about to be the most fire depressing shit i've ever heard but sometimes somehow he manages to make it not interesting you will find out throughout the entirety of this book that there is no big bad except for kind of dalen but like even he's not um, he just goes and walks around and looks at shit and then will fucking describe it or talk to other people about it for fucking ever paragraphs on paragraphs. And like, unironically, your book, your book does not require the fucking reader to be a student of your world, right? No one's book should require that. You should make me want to understand how your world works or go, that was a neat effect. How was it accomplished? And then like kind of get me bits. Every two pages, I would guess, in this book, we stop and go through a fucking his history of shit over and over and over again. If you're getting bored of me talking about it, the book is 18 hours long on Audible. That's all I'm saying. So... You can suck it up if I did. <laughs> Dalen starts off by getting in a cart so he can go to the end of the world and throw himself off and fucking die because it's the only thing his crickle crackle old ass wants to do. And all he talks about is how fucking old he is and how fucking sad he is and how full of regret he is. But in the last 20 years, he never just considered with all of the regret and upsettiness and being upsetty spaghetti to like confess or just kill yourself before we even have to watch the rest of the book. It's just like he has just been kept alive, I guess, by by the will of God in this world, which is just the light, which we'll get into, so that you can be forced to read stories about him. We fucking follow him to a cart. He gets on the cart, and this is the first part where I was like, this book is drive is going to drive me up the fucking wall. Because he's missing a lot of points where I'm like, this is fantasy vibe. Do a thing that makes me, that just hooks me. Please fucking hook me right now into this book. Show me that I want to see Dalen be a good sword fighter, something like that. He gets into this cart uh, with some fucking local rube from his podunk he's been hiding out in. And this kid is going to go to the main city and wear his dueling sash and try to make it as a sword fighter for fucking reasons. I don't know. I guess there's money to be had or something. I literally can't remember. All of the dueling comes up like once at the beginning of the book, sort of kind of one other time. And then also one more time, I think maybe, but those two times might be connect and then never again, 18 hours. It's 10 minutes of content is dueling. I on God's hand to God, 
maybe 10 minutes. <laughs> this Rube is like, okay, I fucking like, Dalen's like, you're going to get your ass kicked. Pull over to the side of the fucking road. And I'm going to fucking sort of show you like how bad you are, even though I'm an old guy. Dalen proceeds to just whoop him. He just fucks him up because he's such a good sword fighter. There's no like great moment where he articulates working around his age in some significant way or shows how big of a strategy strategist he is or like articulates how talented a talented he is with the sword other than him just saying get out let's do sword fighting and then he wins and like beats the kid up and then the kid because this is chronicles of everfall book one shadow of the conqueror just is like well i guess you're right I guess you're fucking right. <laughs> like, and just agrees. And then that's just, then that's just it. He just accomplishes his goal. This happens numerous times throughout this book. Um, they get back in. What I was saying would be much more interesting in this situation. And I'm not going to go through all of these things throughout the rest of the book. I'm going to kind of hammer out the major plot beats that stood, stood out to me at all. Uh, and the ending, and then we'll get to it. But this is just kind of at the very beginning, without being spoilery. If for some reason someone else wants to get into this, um, th- this this is what this she- scene should have been in any any quality book. Mild amount of competence, right? Because this is a scene you would have seen before in other things. You're riding around with the old swordsman. First off, the old swordsman shouldn't be like working. To beat you up. If you have a lot of skill, you should be Miyagiing this kid. You know what I mean? Like literally just get it. So what I said, and, and he just literally says, pull this card over, gets out, they sword fight. It, that's it. What I think this should be is he's like already bouncing around. He's like, driver, can you pull over this cart? I want you to pull over. Specifically there, you see Dalen um choosing the the battlefield for himself. He walks around the kid and is like, well, don't you like, why don't you stand there and then get ready to fight me? And like literally puts the kid, he doesn't even know, into a bad position. So the kid's trying to like fight uphill out of mud and he's on like nice, flat, freshly pressed grass and stuff. And then he just works the kid and fucking like, you know, tires tires him out even and like beats him like literally, you never even hit me. But the kid just gasses himself out and can barely fucking stand because he's an out of shape fucking rube farmer or something like that. It should have been something like that. You know what I'm saying? Because it would have given us a series of of really simple revelations back to back in short order. And by the way, Shad, if you ever watch back through this, in short order, motherfucker, sh- stop writing so much. Your prose is not that good. That's just a fact about your life you're going to have to fucking either deal with or improve. So I'm not like falling in love with like the lyricism of your every sentence. You write too much. Write fucking less. So fucking take this to heart. If you ever watch this video, write fucking less and be efficient with your plot beats. This fucking would have accomplished a number of things. First off, we show that he is concerned about his age, right? Dalen, Dalis the Bastard is concerned with his age, so he has to be cautious. We also see that he's a tactical fucking beast. We also see that he's inherently manipulative and does not care about fighting with honor so much as either teaching a lesson or winning a fight. That's what you can show in that simplistic, in that just simple of a scene. You can get all of that stuff done. And most importantly, a fourth thing you can show either through internal dialogue or just, I mean, it's your audience, so... They're probably too fucking stupid, so you are going to have to spell it out for him. He can say, like, back in the day, I really would have just enjoyed killing this guy, but I feel like as hard as it is for me not to, I don't want to hurt him, and I really want to I really want to help him out. He might have even said something like that, but I was so fucking... I'm, it's so hard to focus because the book is so boringly written, and you fucking over-inflate every goddamn paragraph that it is sometimes almost impossible to pay attention and motherfucker you aren't worth Wuthering Heights you know what I'm saying you're not the fucking scarlet letter I'm not getting a test on this if you can't keep me fucking zapped in then that's a fucking L on your part and that's the fattest L you can fucking take is you're fucking boring man boring 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 just took fucking forever to get to that part 
The other part that I remember of that is that's when uh, everybody started calling each other uh, slurs. I won't say them for TOS, but they started calling each other the, uh, the the slur for somebody with like a mental disability and stuff, and then like saying it over and over and over again. This comes up a, a number of times, and it doesn't make any fucking sense because you're in a fantasy world. You've got Dark Stone. You've got fucking Magoober wagons. You've got sky ships. You've got special words for fucking magic plate armor that goes on top of you. Why not make a new fucking word that's offensive? Like you can just make shit up. You can invent new things. You can just make shit up. It's a fantasy world, but you're like constantly. He goes back and starts using common bad words that are only bad in the context of specifically the era we live in right now. And it's, it, it, it's all horse pucking. At some point during this, he runs into uh, fucking Arik, who is an old shit fucking other guy. He is this world's version of a black dude, which is Charasian, right? Um, I forgot what the cover looked like. I couldn't think if they were actually supposed to be black guys or not. That He's just described as being the most black black guy I've ever heard in my life. It's like they're tall. They, the Chirasians are just all tall and naturally strong and cut. And they're they're very large and dark skin. And they have fucking high fade haircuts. <laughs> which, which, which doesn't mean naturally right off rip that it's a black guy. But like, I think that's the first time I've ever heard a high fade haircut described in a fantasy novel. In my life, which is one of the things I can't say there was a lot of firsts in this book. He made a lot of decisions I've never seen made before. And it was somehow profoundly the wrong one. Each time it's absolute fucking insanity. Uh, But he meets, yeah, he meets this guy and I don't know. They talk for a second. I can't remember. This was all at the very beginning of the book. I can't remember what the fuck happens next, but Dalen throws himself off the edge of the world. Right. And while he's falling, he gets blessed by the light or something uh, and like the Mistborn in fucking Sanderson's book Mistborn? I can't remember. The Sanderson's Mistborn series um, he snaps and fucking gets powers and while he's falling forever I guess, I don't know, I can't remember if there's something at the bottom of these falls or not the, the geography was never explained in any interesting way. It's like one of those, like, it's like discussing the fucking topography, like, in just general detail of another country in passing. Like, I'm not going to fucking remember that. You've got to, like, insert me into it. You know what I'm saying? I, I fucking listened to a couple of the fucking Game of Thrones books. I listened to all. I listened to all of the Sanderson books I've ever heard. I can describe to you almost, I could probably draw out a perfect map of the fucking blasted lands or whatever from the way of the king. I can remember where the fucking town is. I can remember where the little Coliseum is. I know all the nooks and crannies of the little area where they're putting the bridges over top and then they're fighting the fucking people with the crazy glowy skin and running after that. I can remember all of that. I can remember the girl's quarters where she sees the fucking people with the fucking symbol heads. I can remember all that. It's not an issue with Audible, it's just so fucking boring that my brain cannot 100% focus on all of the stuff that you're saying. And literally, it's cut it down. It's not that good. Cut it down. This is 18 hours long, which if Michael Redding or Kate Redding and Michael, whatever the fuck, these guys who are really good narrators, if they read at the same speed I do and I do audiobook narration, that means it's roughly 180,000 words um, of a novel. I don't know if that's exactly the case. It doesn't say how many pages, 504 pages. It's probably, it, that's, yeah, it's probably, you know, 150 to 180,000 words. It's a very fucking long book. It might be shorter because they might read slower than I do, but I digress. He falls off the world and in what should have, should be the first exciting moments of this book, I remember trying to force myself to focus while I'm doing, I'm literally like walking the dog 
while I'm listening to this. I'm walking my dog, not like uh, metaphorically. I'm literally walking Buck outside my neighborhood, trying to understand what the fuck he's talking about because he's falling off the edge of the world for like, it feels like two hours. And he's like, oh, now I can do this. I can fucking, oh, the, the energy's in me. Oh, I can swell my mass up. As you know from the square cube law, I can go backwards. Oh, but I found out that like if I swell mass to this and then if I attach light to that, and then I think he gets back on land at some point. And then the only interesting thing, I swear to God, for the first half of the novel, novel happens, his feet randomly explode because he overloads them with power. And I was like, oh, that's fucking interesting. What happened? Then he sort of describes it. And we never go back into that again. And I think it's barely even fucking articulated for the rest of the book. That is the beginning and end of part one, Dalen's Day Out. Um, then we get into uh, part two of the book. Dalen's Deception. A, 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 a series of cunning foibles. So the entire middle chunk of this book is... Boring as fuck, and literally next to nothing happens. I, I have to, I cannot hammer this home. There is no real overarching plot to the book. It is just people kind of running into each other. The best I can describe this is, is if, 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 like, um, it's like the importance of being earnest is the closest thing to fucking Shadow of the Conqueror. Like, if import, if the importance of being earnest was written to be 18 hours long and had the most unbelievably boring fucking characters, it would be that same vibe. It's just a series of people meeting, having the stupidest fucking conversations you've ever heard, sometimes using slurs for no reason, and it's so awkward, even diegetically, the people say like, hey man, why did you say that? <laughs> Dalen meets Arik again, and Dalen is now, for no real good reason, 17 again. It's 17 again, starring everybody's favorite sociopath, uh, Sky Pirate fucking Stalin. They go around and just describe the fucking universe for, I think, like five hours of the book. Like, seriously, five fucking hours of the book. During this, we are also introduced to the other character whose name I cannot remember. She is a lady. Um, I think her name is Lauren or Loren or Laura or something. I don't know. He de-aged. Yes. Yes. Hold on. Can somebody share? Can somebody just write me a quick list of the actual characters names? I do want to try to say them correctly, but I can't remember them because they're also gibberish names with no naming convention. You can knock fucking game of Thrones names all you want, but I remember all of the Johns. I, ever, I can almost probably, I won't do it, but off the top of my head, remember like half of the Tar Targaryens, like Aegon, Aaron, Aeon, Eon, fucking all of it all the way. But he de-ages from 85 to 17, and from there the book gets fucking weird. It starts off like kind of okay, you know, a little shitty, a little boring, and from there we descend into weird territory, because this is an 85-year-old man in the body of, for no real reason, a 17-year-old. He could have been de-aged to 19, past the age of consent. It would have been fine. But for some reason, putting children or legal children, in my eyes, under the age of 18, in sexual situations with a sort of uh, nonchalant consistency is like is gnarly. This just happens the entire book. As a quick aside, I don't feel like you should cut off like any specific thing as being like, I can't ever have that in a book ever, period. It'll be irredeemable. I think it's fine for children to be put into extreme situations in a book where it's appropriate for that to happen, especially if it's not for specifically people's purient interests. Purient, which is a word I have trouble saying, means like strictly for sexual gratification, no artistic merit whatsoever. You know, um, kids having to like try to figure out like the intense adult sexual violence situations in, for instance, the Game of Thrones books is kind of like an interesting and really, really gritty, insane insight to how horrible that fucking world is. Um, I don't cotton, 
to this shitty ass fucking uh, whining about that stuff. So it's not like I'm like, oh, it's uh, icky, but quite literally it serves no purpose for him to be a child at all. I will say this also before we even get to the end of the book. There is no reason for him to be Dayless the Conqueror at all. Uh, literally, there's a better book. I'll describe it later. Uh, I just want to describe Chunk 2, um, and then I'll probably take a real quick break and check chat, and then I'll come back and finish off my my sort of quick synopsis of this book. And I swear to God, as rambling as this sounds, this is a quick synopsis. Uh, during this, you also get to meet the um, second lady... Um, I can't remember her name's like Lauren or Laura or something. She is partnered with another black dude um, who is from the Chirasian society. We find out that Chirasians, for no real reason, um, aside from like cultural norms, they go around naked all the time and without their shirts on and act inappropriate inappropriately, which really fucks with this lady because she has a big hang up about sex. Um, well, I won't even spoil what the hang is hang up is just yet. I feel like there's better times to reveal it. It, it. There's a better time to reveal why she has a big hang up with sex. Um, these characters, the whole Chirasian race of people and culture, makes no fucking sense in the entire book. I feel like Chirasians are really just non-whites. Non-white just makes more sense. I think there's also some e like Asiany like East Asian looking type people described at some point, but it really doesn't fucking matter. Um, this guy is introduced and it is the beginning of awkward sex talk for the rest of the book. Once you're at this point, by the way, if you get not even just like triggered, if you get just grossed out or like, like you're just like, I am immediately bored by like sophomoric, uh, unfunny sex jokes and descriptions of sex and sexual organs. Um, that's the part of the book where you could pretty much just skip all the rest of the book. That that's that's what will filter you. It's a bore. It's not even a filter. It's just a two by four of bad writing. Uh, this guy talks about his penis being strong, which means that he's got a hard on all the time. My penis is not strong. Do you want to give me fuck? Like he's just like this uh, be bewildered. A uh, foreigner who's sex obsessed and dark skinned, you know, it's a character you character trope you've never heard before. This is a this is a shadiversity original. That definitely not something that almost any Mormon would probably repeat if they're fucking diehard in the church. Uh, if you go to Utah, you can hear these opinions. Um, just general wherever you walk. <laughs> It's not all Mormons are, aren't all bad, but like a lot the, the people that will dog on the Mormon church the hardest are fucking ex Mormons. I swear to God. Uh, the Chirasians are bizarre. By the way, it's C H U R R A S I A N S. I told my wife this, and she immediately said, Does that mean like a chorizo Asian? And I was like, It sounds like churro Asian to me, like a Mexican Asian. And for anyone else, I would be like, well, that's probably just kind of a coincidence. But like, I feel like Shad just heard one of his comics gate friends calling like a Mexican person, like a Chur Asian, like a Churro Asian. And it was just like, I bet I could get away with using that in a book. It wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, I, I, I don't know what to really add on that. Those two characters have uh, next to no real chemistry and even that, even saying that, they're probably the only two that are interesting to listen to because at least they're not fucking Dalen and Arik walking around describing everything that they see. For reasons I can't quite remember, but I believe it's just Dalen is like, I want to do some good with this new lease on life. Dalen decides to go start pirate hunting around halfway through the book. Um, he charters a fucking sky barge and then goes and gets into a fight with another pirate whose name is Blackheart, the coolest name you've ever heard ever. Uh, this is the only interesting part of the book. It was the only part where I was just like constantly listening to everything that happened. And I was in my head almost literally, not even almost, I was literally rooting for Shad to pull it back together. Like you've got it. This is it. You, this is almost fucking interesting. 
stick the landing. Stick the fucking landing. He does not stick the landing. He jumps off the fucking edge of the sky barge. He hits his head on a rock. He falls bleeding into the fucking Everfall or whatever. I guess it is an Everfall. It's, uh, it's dumb. The sky barge scene is the beginning of the end of any ability for any normal person to read this book and not start going, Shad Brooks is a fucking weird guy. Because you get into weird fucking guy territory immediately. And like, it's not just like a little thing. It's, it's like death by 10 billion fucking cuts. We get on to the pirate ship. Obviously, obviously, uh, Dalen beats all the pirates single-handedly. A, a recurring thing in this is that Dalen does not need any help. Dalen has figured it all out. No one else is necessary for any other part of the plot. They just are fucking ancillary to everything. They don't need to be there. They're there to go, you can't do that. That's a 17th level fucking uh, ball tap. What, you mean that it goes higher? Uh, it could. <laughs> what about this? It's literally, do you know that slightly cringe, um, this is Super Saiyan 2, and this is what it means to go beyond. That meme is this book. But imagine he just keeps going to like 20 fucking levels with every single individual thing that they fucking come across. Um, he wipes out all the pirates instantaneously. At some point uh, earlier, fucking Arik teaches him how to see the light in people, which is actually just carte blanche for him to just kill anybody who's like got a dim heart. So anyone who's kind of got like a little dark hearted, he's like, eh, he probably fucking did it. And he gets super hearing like Superman and can jump through buildings. And then he immediately just starts popping around. And of course, as one would assume, killing rapists. Because people were being raped all the time in very clear cut situations all over the place. And he just goes around killing them. He's very nonchalant about killing them. This is, mind you, the guy who says the worst punishment for anybody is to live. Just keep that in mind as we discuss what happens going forward from here. Uh, he fights Blackheart, who is like, hey, aren't you one of Dalis's bastards? And Dalen the Conqueror, the world's smartest guy, who is the most prolific rapist in the history of the Everfall continents, is like, what? I never had any kids. And he's like, bro, are you fucking stupid? Which was like, I wish Blackheart stuck around because he was the only character that made any sense. Unfortunately, he gets beaten in a sword fight, and for no real good reason, um... Dalen impales him through the ass on a broken chunk of wood uh, and and kills him in the most, like, unironically sociopathic way possible. Like, little kid. This, Shad wrote this in 2019, which means he was still, I guess, like 40 or something. And me personally, I grew out of this hyper edgy phase. You know, hey, man, I still play the Sith side in, in uh, Knights of the Old Republic. Literally, when Knights of the Old Republic was out before I graduated high school. Shad, however, not quite the same guy. Um, of course, we find out that uh, the ship that he, he was on, that Shad's character was on, Shad was on, <laughs> that Dalis was on, um, was actually a slave barge full of little girls that had all been being sexually assaulted. And he goes and kills all the people on his barge. Now he owns two barges. For some reason, he lets one of the people live. It's some kid named Sane. Um, and Sane gets the barge in the end in a bunch of money. We have one second, one brief fucking second where an interesting thing can happen. And then from here on out, the story is boring as fuck. Um, I'm going to finish this thought and then I'll go to chat. Dalen describes the big bad, what I think is supposed to be the big overarching big bad in this story, which we never really get into earlier. Hey, bud, I can't, I can't talk and do a full bunny cam right now, but you can have this. Oh, look. Look. Oh, look. See? Those are two halves of the same. Um... Apparently in this world, like it said in the thing, if you spend too much time in the dark, you turn into a, a shade or whatever the fuck, and then you get superpowers and you can rip people's arms off and you just want to kill people and I think like eat them a little bit. 
And then one of the weirdest things possible to mention, but it was only the only interesting thing, is that there's special shades. And if you're a girl that gets raped a lot before you turn into a shade, then you turn into a lust, which is a special type of shade that's basically some sort of ur succubus that just goes hunts down men and men have no ability to resist fucking the uh, former rape victim turned super succubus demon thing. Uh, that was like kind of interesting because I was like, I can't believe uh, you're stupid enough to put that in a book. <laughs> Other people, I can imagine almost kind of getting away with it, you know, but like literally I can't see any other author I've, almost ever written outside of the like splatterpunk genre which I also have next to no fucking respect for saying uh, you know what what if like a little girl gets fucking sexually assaulted so much that she turns into a specific type of super demon that can succubus men to death and uh, that's like wow that is the most you have a whole book about just constantly killing rapists and like your inability to understand like the greater implications of sexual assault or like have any, any fucking remote amount of sympathy in your heart for it is insane. Insane. Um, we're going to begin part three of this here in a second. I think that's a good part to stop uh, because the next part is even more ridiculous, but it's a good part to start again. I'm going to go talk to chat for a second. I'll be right back with you. <laughs> Let's see. I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to zoom. What time is it right now? Okay. 854. God, I can't believe we've been talking about this for almost an hour now. Dylan is Stalin times uh, a million. Absolutely. The structure of Everfall combined with its name reminds me a lot of Everfall from Dragon's Dogma, which I know Shan is a, Shad is a big fan of. Is it? There's a bunch of chunks of this that are like, uh, how do you say that? There's a bunch of chunks of this that I can tell are stolen from other books. And some of them, like I couldn't remember. And like I said, I didn't want to write down a bunch of notes and shit. Um, sorry, I keep urban. Uh, I did want to write about, down a bunch of fucking goofy ass notes and stuff, but I was just like, I know that that's from other books. I recognize more than a few things just taken straight from Sanderson. I think light binding was one of them specifically and shit. I'm surprised he wasn't just talking about fu like rape spren for the entirety of this fucking thing. God damn. Uh, shout out be Billy K the rotund samurai and uh, yeah, be Billy K the rotund samurai and enemy of water bottles ever everywhere. Fuck. Yeah, dude. I miss that guy. Him and that one thick boy that looks like a fuck the dude that was so chunky. He looks like a fucking, uh, one piece character that just pulls out the like pistol, like right off his hip. And it's like, doesn't even go past his body and it's just ba -ba 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 and fucking shoots it like that. I miss him too. I miss those fellas. The old YouTube fucking slapped. I wouldn't call Shad a grifter, but he is a complete dumbass. Fair enough. I, I unironically, I feel like there is there's an you can't argue pretty effectively that Shad's not legitimately a grifter. It's just that he's so installed in the grifter sphere sphere that it just is. It's a part of where he is. It's like being like it's the one. It, like, if you know, like, if you've ever been to, like, a red light district or, like, a place like that, and it's like, okay, this is all porn stores and tattoo shops, but then there's just, like, one place that sells comic books on it. You're like, that's the comic book and the comic book store, the red light district, and, like, I guess it's not, like, you know, a sex shop or legitimately, like, a tattoo parlor or a strip club, but then you go in and it's all just really, really weird, like, Lolita fucking mangas and like uh, just the weirdest comics ever. You're like, Ugh. is it different though? <laughs> Technically not the same in a legal way. It's not the same, but is it a little bit similar? I think it is. Does anybody know if he's actually been working on book two? It's been like years. I haven't seen anything. I don't think he's going to write another one. He's a sword guy, but yeah, the HEMA community finds him laughable because he's shit at it and can't handle criticism. Yeah, the one thing I noticed, uh, as just a, a quick, like, aside, 
in all of this stuff is I remember because people are talking about the uh, sussy AI art thing with the girl with the bad weird broke arm fucking pose of holding the stick over her head or the 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 Zweihander over her head is I remember scrolling down on that and I keep forgetting to go back to it and Shad is demonstrating that pose which is called an ox guard I looked it up and fucking all of the Hema guys I've seen it I've seen every way you can hold a Zweihander because I looked at like Robin Swords, who literally just does uh, Zweihander fucking sword fighting in Hema with pads and shit. I looked at the what the Landsnecht book that has them all doing the stuff. And like when Shad did it, he was all anime. Like he had the, he had these legs. You know when anime people were doing the big leg back. You know this is his front leg. This is his back leg. Yeah, all the way back with it over his head. And I was like, hmm, I know a little bit about fighting. And uh, I got to say, if you don't have really, really fucking strong legs, bending your leg that far seems like you're, you're, you're storing a little bit too much power in it. And you're not going to get the delivery you want off of it. All the other ox guard people got their legs like this. It seems like it's a really casual, like kind of back and forth, uh, like, like kind of a hairier type thing. If I had to guess, you know, you're trying to poke at people and keep them a little fucking off and then you could swing at it. I think that's the vibe. But he was like all the way back with his leg out. And I was like, I don't think that's it. I get why you're doing it because you did the girl in that pose, but I don't think that's it. That's actually more of a like spear pose for like Chinese uh, combat theater. I've seen that. That's like the fucking crouching tiger hidden dragon pose. You know, you get the fucking leg all the way back down like that kind of deal. The little, I can't get it on the screen because it's mirrored, but you know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean? I think I said, he said on X, formerly Twitter, that he's writing it. Uh... You guys think he looks like Eddie Redmayne or James? Oh, he really does look like James Franco. Actually, he really kind of does. I, I see it now that you said it. Well, Franco's been actually, Franco sleeping with all of his students was actually, uh, what do you call that? It was um, method acting. He's doing method acting practice to play Dalen. You guys don't know that it's about to be revealed. <laughs> Repeating yourself while confusingly, confusingly mulling over the same two points as the Shadow versus the bread and butter. You ain't fucking wrong. Yeah, Shadow said he basically made his MC every dictator times 100 and can't remember all he named that were a direct influence. You really don't need to add much more than, like, just clearly, like, Stalin. It, it's just, it's literally just the fucking, uh, like, the Bolshevik Revolution. Anything else just seems tacked on. See, I can't. I don't know what you guys are are, are fucking. Uh, the, yeah, he killed millions in CSA thousands. Yeah, basically. Chad trying to explain how his work makes sense scientifically is so funny. It really is too, because he brings up a lot of like high, highly complex Western described physics concepts that I feel like don't actually work in his universe. If you had to like sit down and look at them, and it's so weird to hear it like. Like he he does the cube square. He says literally the cube square law. I think like once or twice, maybe three times. And like he talks about mass a lot. But I feel like... I, I just feel like it, it just sounds weird in conjunction with the rest of it. Because like it's also a society where you fucking like strap light to stuff. And, and, and like the light... All the, the light technology and the dark stone technology is all fucking, uh, or sunstone, that's what it is. The sunstone and darkstone technology stuff all sounds real fantasy steampunky, you know what I mean? And then you just start getting into, like, dry fucking, you know, uh, 101 physics and shit. It's very strange whipping back and forth. Oh, I forgot his whole living is a worse punishment for death bullshit. I just finished the book, and we'll get into why that's fucking hilarious. By the way, I will fucking say the logic this book follows is the people with a righteous spirit use that as powers. Dalen did a righteous thing by killing himself, so it's like Hitler goes to heaven because he offed Hitler. That actually does make sense in that context, and I hate it. I hate it. No hero's journey. This really does, it really does not, it kind of jams actually the hero's journey cycle all into the last act of it. We'll get into that in a bit. Even worse than being evil, he's boring. That's really, that's the, my biggest criticism is this is a, a profoundly boring novel. Like, yeah, it's badly written, but I would take badly written if it was just like interesting and kind of all over the place. Like I've read like little kid short stories and shit where I'm like, this is fucking fire. 
but I just love it because you know I if I if you if you go into stuff with a genuine joy of like reading and experiencing other people's art, even bad stuff can be extremely enjoyable as long as it's at least not fucking boring. You know, if this book was only like a quick fucking like 15 20 chapters, got rid of almost I'll, I'll fix it a bit, but like got rid of almost all the giant chunks of it that are really irritating and boring. I would be so much more enamored with it for just being such a clusterfuck of like, uh, literally just, I kept saying this in my mind. If I was actually writing notes, my one note that came up again and again, other than boring and too much would just be known politics under standard Shad M. Brooks. I just kept thinking that over and over and over again. (laughs) Like Batman, there are three things that are terrible to read: inconsistent power levels, no narrative stakes, and characters being pig-headed. Yeah, there's more bad things, but those aren't those. Those are three. Those are three particularly bad ones. I would say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says uh, he, he he. They say that fucking our slur in there a bunch. And don't if you're one of these people like you're too afraid to say the slur. Like come to my fucking house when I'm not worried about TOS. I'll call you all the worst names you've ever heard under the sun. But with all due respect to the people that are in my fucking community that might hear this and my ability to get a paycheck, there's literally no reason for me to say that word. But also, there's literally no reason to say that word in a general sense. You can really get away with it, uh, get away with saying all sorts of other stuff. Like, are you addled? You can just say, like, are you fucking addled? You know, if you're a real good writer and you're trying to show off how fucking smart the smartest smart fuck fucking uh, gonker ever period ever was... He could be out there calling like, yo, did your mom use your head for a, uh, did you, did your mom use your skull for a fucking piss pan or something like that? You know, like, uh, what, what did your, did your family go hungry and carve out your fucking brain? I don't know. Like there's something more interesting than just a common slur. Well, well, no, 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 well, no, no, subscribe. They also call it, they also call people gay very often in this book and by very often i mean i think like maybe two times like if i had a nickel for every time someone said like that's gay in this book it, i would have two nickels but it's still crazy that it happened twice right and and i'll get into that in part three let me get down to the to the bottom of it so people talking to each other i'm gonna have to turn on fucking top chat soon this is insanity Rape spren. <laughs> yeah. If you don't know, um, in the uh, Way of the King books, I can't remember what those are called. I feel like it's Lightbringer. I can't remember, but the, 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 there's the one um, series of Sanderson books that starts with the Way of the King. Um, there's spren, which are like kind of like the Japanese version of gods, you know, uh, where like kind of anything has like a little god in it that makes it like, or that kind of represents the spirit of that thing. So you have like wind spren, it's S P R E N appended to the end of whatever noun, which is an interesting thing. So, you know, it, you have really uncomplicated spren, a pain spren that show up when you get hurt life spren that pop around when people are feeling like particularly like vibrant and alive wind spren storm spren rock spren stones it's it's one of those kind of things and then you have more complicated ones and i think it would just be like i wouldn't be surprised because i know he's a massive sanderson fucking uh sanderson wank for him to just have been like i wonder if i can introduce rape spren to this world (laughs) that's what i need (laughs) lolita spren Jesus Christ. Shad isn't working on book two right now. He's doing a comic that may use AI art. Of course he is. That's going to take him about 10 fucking years because I've seen him trying to make one panel and he's still doing it for like three months. I wanted to hear if it was that bad for myself and dear God, I have the audiobook on 1.2 times speed. I listened to it at one speed. I listened to it at one speed. It was 18 hours. That's all I can say. Look, I don't like kink shaming people. People can do what they want as long as it doesn't harm others. But God fucking damn, can Shad not even try to hide his fetish? It is it is literally that fucking uh police squad episode from back in the day. If you guys don't know Police Squad, where they had weird titles for every episode because it was like an absurdist comedy thing, and it was like on tonight's episode of Police Squad, the artists <laughs> the writers barely disguised fetish. 
<laughs> where the episode of Mad Men, where the one guy's like, I've been writing a Star Trek. It's like this one fired ad exec's like, I've been writing a Star Trek spec script. Would you like to look at it? And the guy starts reading it, and it's like, Did you know that the 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 temptresses of the planet Negron, dark skinned girls who who could while away any man? Uh, the, the, he, Captain Kirk lands on it and is, is, is like consumed by this desire to get closer. And the guy's like, I don't think they want to read this. I don't think you want other people to read this is the fucking stupidest shit. I'm not saying he stole it, but does anyone remember the Dinotopia miniseries where everything was powered by sunstones? I've, I feel like I've heard sunstone so many times in things though. I can't even keep a track. Pain spren that cause you to need ass spren. Shut the fuck up. That's actually fucking hilarious. Mr. Masker, 18 hours, you'll never get back. I was drawing during it. That's the one thing. If I'm going to read a bad book, I have to listen on Audible so I can like do dishes, uh, go to the gym. I'll tell you what, man. If you want to start hitting PRs or actually just take your own life in your hand, you got to fucking listen to a Shadiversity book. I would like to make the joke that I, I was still mad. Ooh, I got it harder. Unironically, I feel like there's parts of this that I was laughing so fucking hard at. If I had had like, if I was trying to like push 225 or go higher, which is like kind of the upper limits, I might have laughed and dropped the whole fucking, the whole fucking bar right on my chest and died. And everyone would be like, what happened to him? And you would never know. But like, it would be like, it must have been some sort of mistake. And then like the camera pans down and zooms in and you just see Chronicles of Everfall ticking up higher and higher on my audible on my phone. <laughs> <sighs> oh no i know we're gonna get into the third part no spoilers yet mika um okay cool we are caught up we are officially caught up so okay we, we get into dalen's uh day out shadow of the conqueror part three uh which i'll just call part three is just dalen's redemption okay after the events of the pirate barge Right, we have probably about four and a half ish hours, I think, left in this story. So, mind you, it took us fourteen hours to get through that. The first major person we overcame was Blackheart. It took all of thirty fucking seconds to do this, and uh, at this point, you and I and Shad all know that Shad is out of fucking plot and has not realized what's going on. So, at this point. Shad defaults to what Shad knows best, which is just heaping on underage girls being sexually assaulted. I don't know how to say it any better. By the time we get to the end of this book, there are, I believe, of the hundreds of women that are on screen, of the maybe five that are like actual significant characters that have speaking lines, possibly two of them have not been raped as a major plot point, almost specifically in general, by the main character, Shad's fucking character, Dalen. And I, all of the main girls in the book, all of them who have speaking lines that I can remember, or are point of view characters, or uh, have a strong relationship with a point of view character, have been raped by the end of this book it is non-stop it, at, after you hit the fuck if you're trying to find parts to jump off your own version of the edge of the world this is the moment to bail because it is literally I, unironically if you are a person that doesn't want to hear about this shit check out now because it is the entirety of the last Four hours is descriptions of sexual assault and fucking rape apologia. I shit you not. Let's hop into it. Dalen's Redemption, part three. Uh, after we end fucking the, the pirate ship saga, um, Dalen frees a bunch of uh, rape victims. It's a bunch of girls. None of them can be, of course... None of them are over like 18. They're all described as being between like 14 and 16, which he reveals short, shortly after was the general age of the girls. He started sexually assaulting for no particular reason 
while he was the emperor. Mind you, he is Wally's emperor for some 30, 40 years or whatever. He is doing mass exterminations. He is the world's most prolific inventor. He is the world's most prolific and talented sword fighter and duelist. He is the world's most prolific and exhausted uh, rapist. And also he is constantly putting down rebellions by people who are not as smart as him, but also uh, uh, they succeed. Also, he is somehow both the world's smartest inventor and smartest guy, but also the world's worst economist and tries to do uh, the libertarian's understanding of communism and destroys people. He does Holodomor's here and there. Uh, for reasons that I think he was just like articulated as being bored, he just starts having girls brought to him for his desires. He says he makes them walk around naked. He makes them dress up in, uh, Chirasian clothing, which because we've heard that the Chirasians barely wear clothing, I think he might've forgotten that. And he was just thinking Asian clothing. And in my mind, because first off, I don't think there's almost any descriptions of Teresian clothing that are particularly deep or repetitive. If you've read Game of Thrones, like I can remember a, a number, a number of ways that people are, are described as being dressed because they're royalty and stuff. One of the most notable ones was uh, Ned Stark showed up, be, uh, showed up resplendent in a in a pink doublet emblazoned with the sign of the wolf. Uh, the, the, the wolf sign of his house on the chest, a dark crushed velvet cape, uh, high fine leather boots, a scabbard at his waist, and fine riding pants that seemed as well suited for combat as they did for a day at court. I swear to God, that is probably half correct. You could type that in and you'll get chunks of that out of the actual book. That is off rip. I can remember that. I can remember the fit. I haven't read that book in eight years or more. I think I actually, that's from the first one because he's still alive. I read that book in 2000 and fucking 11, right after the first season came out. So that I'm, when I tell you, I remember how people dress in books and shit. I, I, I fucking do. I can remember all sorts of stuff in, in all of the way of the King books, all the ladies wear uh, gloves on their left hand because that's their little slut hand. If they walk around without a glove on it, everyone's like, yo, look at this fucking hoe out here with her fingies out. God damn. I'm f- Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can remember all of these things. I cannot remember what the Chirasians wear. So in my mind, all I can imagine is just all of these like 14 year old literal Japanese schoolgirls. And like white girls wearing Japanese schoolgirl clothing that like Shad with blue hair is abusing. That's all I can think of for all of his descriptions of these scenes. I was listening to it, by the way, too. So I can't just speed skip. I just all the, the whole time. And of course, I had never felt the way, but I brought them. And after a while, I needed virgins because I was too burned out on just normal shit. I needed to do worse shit. And it's like real grimy. And mind you, he just impaled his own bastard son through the asshole with a gigantic splintered post for even being like associated with this shit, much less doing it. During this chunk of time, immediately after freeing these girls from the other barge, it's rapists everywhere in this fucking world, right? No more interesting crime. No one's ever being attacked for for doing like embezzlement or like high level financial crimes. Like no one's he's not like listening for like oh I hear somebody has too much gold tinkling in their pocket. He's like oh there's another rape happening. Okay. His fucking world. I swear to God. Uh, one of the girls he rescued, who I swear to God the whole time I was listening to the description of her, it sounds just like fucking Kara Zarel. Uh, fucking Supergirl. Um, maybe not, not quite, but like seriously. Okay, so she has bright blue eyes. She was extremely cute. She was 16 years old or maybe 14, very young, something like that, with dark hair and streak, dark blue hair maybe with like streaks of red through it. 
And I think she was like half naked still because they didn't have anything. And this girl is just like throwing herself at him because as a girl who just escaped from brutal, relentless, imprisoned uh, sexual assault by a series of strangers on a ship, the first thing she thought was like, hey, I... I want to go into a sexual relationship with another man. It's just, as, as all victims of sexual assault do, they immediately are like, I'm going to gravitate towards men right now. What I want to be around right now the most is a guy, a strange man I've never met before. You know, it's like, Shad, if you ever watch back through this, I'm not saying you should do it, but you can go get online and just do what I did as a crime and courts reporter and see somebody testify about their sexual assault that actually happened to the person that did it. If you want to just ruin your day, you can get a deeper sense of these things. Those women are real. You will have to hear a woman out. That might be too much. But if you just want to experience the worst possible thing you'll ever fucking experience, you can do it right now. Just look up testimony of SA victim, and then you can have all of your research done for you just to see, just if you ever want to try to do this a little bit more realistically. But I'll just, I'll go ahead and spoil some findings for you. There are none of these girls that are going to be looking beautiful immediately after they got done being uh, attacked in the holding cell of of a ship for multiple days on end. They're not going to be really together. They they don't go and powder their faces and get showers and then show up in your your room. That 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 just doesn't happen. I can't really articulate that anymore. Um but the one possibly fucking interesting thing that could have come from this book and didn't happen didn't happen. So he described paragraphs maybe pages before that girls that are attacked like that and stay in the dark too long can turn into the super succubi that kill guys called lusts now that would have actually justified despite how gross it is the actions of this random girl as she goes forward she gets turned down by him and then she goes and turns her attentions immediately to sane um, his boy companion, who is a boy, but is also like basically his age. They talk about that a bunch. It's really fucking lame. And then she goes and feminine wiles him into a secluded area. And I thought as almost, I think any person who has read a book before would have thought that this was going to be the first move by the darkness to attack Dalen, who is supposed to be the new son of the light. The fucking the 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 fixed sinner who was gonna come and save the world. It was a, a one of these lust creatures. That girl had turned into it, and she was gonna kill him. And instead, she goes and she's gonna kill Sane or fuck him up and turn him crazy evil or something. And then they're gonna try to attack this guy. And that's gonna ha- be how we get introduced to the third act conflict. Holy shit! He actually did narrativization. He just wrote a fuck after fucking. 14 hours. He wrote story. Wrong. She just fucking wanted to have sex because she was like, I'm damaged goods now. So I'm going to throw myself at the first guy who's nice to me. Uh, cause then, cause I, what else can I do? I'm a woman that's been, uh, fucking sexually assaulted. That's the end of my life. I am used goods. I can do nothing anymore. This is Shad's fucking characters repeating this, by the way, a lot throughout the rest of this. I want to, because I can't remember where it happens, give a special shout out to one thing that I think occurred earlier and I forgot about. That was just the saddest shit I've ever seen in a book, too. Um, Arik and um, Dalen are starting to like hit it off, right, and be friends and stuff. And they're talking about religion and shit. And uh, Arik is just like, hey, man, I'm going to go for a walk. You want to go for a walk with me? It's like a nice night. We can just kind of like walk around and talk and, you know, be buds. And fucking Dalen's just like, no, nah, that's gay. He literally says, that's gay. I'm not going to go for a walk with you. Just like, no homo, dude. I'm, I'm going to fucking stick here. And that was just the most depressing insight into a person I've ever experienced from a book. That... 
that's just fucking because I know the comfort with which he says certain things just has that vibe as a person who's read a lot of books and a lot of especially like amateurish shit from people. I get the vibe sometimes where I'm like, I can tell what is something that you based on reality. And I think Shad said that to people before. They're like, hey, man, you want to go fucking hang out? He's like, no, that's fucking gay. <laughs> it's the it's the fucking worst shit. This this section gets worse. We're about to get really deep into it. During all of this stuff that's going on, the one chick, Laura, whatever her name is, that's been fucking stapled to the side of this plot, right? We finally, through conversations that don't matter, she has a series of chapters where she's trying to find Dalen and Arik. It's boring as fuck. It doesn't matter. And the whole time, uh, Arik, who's the other guy, is just like, do you want to do a sex with me? Why do you make your face angry? If you do your face is angry, then possibly you want to ride my dick? Is my penis too strong for you? All over and over and over again. It's 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 not funny the first time. And by the 15th time, I'm I've been assured that it's not funny. <laughs> Don't know what to add to that. Um it does get worse. We find out that she is one of Dayless's fucking girls from the past. She's described as a middle-aged, beautiful middle-aged woman. And we find out that she's... Uh, I almost don't know why I started doing a Donald Trump. She's a beautiful girl. I knew her when she was younger. I can't quite remember where from. Um, it was my bed chambers. Oh, shit. Oh, that was a big... That was a naughty day, and I shouldn't have uh, done this Scooby-Doo with her. <laughs> so we find out that she was one of Dayless the Conqueror's victims... Um, he made her, he paraded her, stole her from her family, paraded her around naked and, uh, repeatedly sexually assaulted her for weeks, months, years. I can't quite remember. Uh, I wasn't really trying to commit any of that to memory. Um, and so Dalen knows this and does not immediately be like, Hey man, you should just slit my throat. I feel like that's what should happen here is you should just kill me. He, apologizes on behalf of his father. I don't know if I've mentioned this because it happens so much that it's irritating. Dalen has convinced everybody that he's just his own kid and that's why he's young now and everybody falls for it. It's literally so stupid. I keep forgetting to say it, but that's just a recurring thing is that everyone's just like, how do you know everything that your father knows and you have all of his clothes and they fit and you have his sword that only you could possibly have because it's like bonded to your soul. And you have his special dueling glove, and you know where all of his treasure's hidden, and you're a grandmaster uh, duelist at 17, and you have all of his powers, and you have like a fucking fucking doctorate in engineering, and you're 17. Like, how how is that possible? And he's like, I, I just my dad talked to me a bunch. Well, why didn't we see you in the village? I, I fucking walked back and forth. It doesn't make any fucking sense. So it was hard to bring up. If this continues while he's talking to his rape victim. I cannot explain. I cannot express this enough. This man is talking to his own rape victim for a while and just never cops to it. Uh, she finds out on her own later. Um, and while they're talking, she says all the things that was like happening to her and how much she hates his dad. And then they kind of get like uh, a little like a moment together. And I'm like, they're not going to try to push a romance between these two. And fuck it. And she is, by the way, in her like 40s, 40s, 50s. And he's supposed to be a 17-year-old boy, 85-year-old trapped in the body of a 17-year-old boy. And he's just like, oh, you're beautiful. And like at that point, I was like, I think it's okay from now on to fuck with Shad. But maybe I'm wrong. And don't worry, I was confirmed later on when this actually gets worse. The book, the book gets worse. In the last half hour is the worst part. We're not even there yet. Um, we, during this chunk, we get introduced to our third act conflict because by the way, we solved all of the conflicts in the story aside from Dalen saying like, oh shit, yo, hey, I'm the guy that fucking raped you, uh, when you were a kid, uh, fucking crazy, right? You're still cute though, by the way, like that's, that's not the most sociopathic thing to ever say to somebody ever. I don't know, but it's wild. It's, it's a thing. It's a thing that happens. The fucking balls to write this shit is it beyond me. Not just because it's like, 
a liberal like you doesn't have the courage to try to uh, be as uh, um, subversive and dangerous to the industry as me. It's like, no, man, I'm just, uh, I talk to girls, man. I don't know how to say that. I've just, I've just conversed with women before. Just been like, hello, Emily. Hi, Megan. Jennifer, what's up? How are you doing, Amelia? And just had conversations with women. So, and so I just have a deep understanding in my heart that that shit is uh, ethically impermissible uh, because it's disgusting on a level that surpasses profanity. It is. It, it is one of those where it's like, if speaking intellectually from a distance, I can say you shouldn't be outright brain to death with the hammer <laughs> for saying it. But if I was near you, it would take other people restraining me to keep me from start slapping you around for saying something that fucking gross. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause I'm just a man. Like, I'm just a red-blooded American fucking, I don't like bad things happening to girls. I don't like people mistreating women kind of shit. It's just the cowboy in me would just make me want to grab you by your shirt and just give you a few to try to wake you up from whatever fucking coma you just slipped into. Like, hey, partner, you want to fucking, you feeling better yet? You said some crazy shit. I thought, I thought you had a spell on you. Don't worry. We, 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 we fucking slapped your eyes black, but I think you'll be fine. Like, it's just. Beyond the pale, beyond the pale, and it gets worse. I cannot believe how worse it gets. We're introduced to the Act Three subconflict, which is uh, the uh, the dayless cult, right, of people that want him to come back. Unironically, uh, the like blue-haired pronoun girls. He just has he literally. There are. I'm, I know I keep saying literally, but I can't, there's no other word for it. He is, he literally does a Ben Shabibo, uh, breaks his fucking foot off in the ass of stupid college kid compilation conversations with people that are part of his like pseudo Soviet fucking fascist cult that want to bring back, uh, Dalicism ism. He talks to this little girl, and this is the moment where it was just like, oh, it's it's known politics understander, shadiversity. Hold on. This is one of the ones. Well, I, I actually have some recordings from this. I want to play these. Uh this these are one of the few where it was literally like I had to I had to I had to commit this to film. I'm gonna play both of them because they're fucking maddening. Russian showed that she was now taking him far more seriously. And let me tell you, Jenna. You're nothing but a deranged zealot. I despise everything you stand for. I didn't lose my way while in hiding. It was there that I finally found myself again. I rediscovered the man who fought through the fourth night, the hero you say you love. And that man would have been horrified at everything I did as emperor. He would have fought with all his power to destroy him. Dalen glared at the woman. I think I, this is just an extra 30 minutes or 30 shock. seconds on me. The problems in the current government don't validate the Dawn Empire. Redistributing wealth is just another name for state-sanctioned theft. I stole everything from everybody. Land, money, and resources. And then gave back just enough for the people to survive. Hoarding the rest for my military and indulgence. I murdered anyone who opposed me. Took away the people's right to speak. The very freedom you flaunt on countless soapboxes through the city. I would have slaughtered any group who spoke against me to the level you speak against the current government. You have so to sit through this you with say me. Things are. They're a damn sight better than the Dawn Empire and aristocracy. You want a better life for the poor? Good. But bringing back the failed and oppressive ideologies of the past is the most foolish thing you can do. The Dawn Empire is not the answer. You would be just as poor as you are now, but even more <laughs> oppressed and miserable. <laughs> The conquer As you might tell from that, that was only a minute and a half. That was a minute and a half. You've been listening to me talk for like two hours. That was a minute and a half of Shad's writing. And your eyes are like bleeding right now, aren't they? 
<laughs> he never shuts the fuck up. <laughs> it's a whole fucking endless fucking speech. Hold on. Uh, this is, I want to play this one too. This one's actually fucking funny, I think. This is the one from way earlier. Sharp angles, defined jaw, and prompt servants of the lock. Known for all its sharp angles, defined jaw, and prompt oh, servants sorry. of the light. Dalen was expecting someone, but certainly not a bringer. Hobbling to the man who sat facing the road, Dalen called out in a disgruntled tone, Hey, you, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, you! The man turned to look at Dalen. He was at least in his fifties, yet still looked like a pup to Dalen's aged eyes. His face looked to have been chiseled from stone for all its sharp angles, defined jaw, and prominent chin. He was clearly fit and strong, a common trait among Eurasians, as identified by the bringer's dark brown skin and bright yellow hair, which was cut very short and faded at the temples. <laughs> Hello there, the man said in a voice so clear and enunciated he might have been a stage actor. He spoke in a cultured Hamaran accent and, added with the fact that he was really clothed, indicated that he hadn't been born. Well, I can tell he's a Cherasian because he's dark-skinned, tall, and athletic, and has a high fade. Uh, we're being canceled because of our beliefs? Like, right, you wrote that? You wrote that on purpose, my man? <laughs> These are the writing sample chunks. I only have three. I buy. I, I this is. Do you understand what I'm saying? I got one more. I wanted to see what it is. Our interests, and the rest of us, the majority of the nation, suffer in poverty. Dalen had this to one, yeah. a snort. The rich <laughs> ensured <laughs> that the rich are elected. Was she actually paying attention to her words? The poor constituted the larger vote. The reason why the rich were in power was because the poor were electing them. Granted, there were more complex reasons behind this, like access to education, but it all ignored the fact that getting someone elected from the factories or tenements didn't ensure they would represent the poor any more than assuming someone who was rich wouldn't. <laughs> she was making moral judgments upon people based on their social status, rather than their individual actions, the same thing Dalen had done when he overthrew the aristocracy and executed them. God. The, the writing is so profoundly dull, but no, do you understand what I mean by known politics understander shadiversity? <laughs> um, actually, I don't know if you understand this, but if the poor, who are most of the people, wanted to be elected, all they would have to do is vote for the poor. If rich people weren't supposed to be elected, then why are they being voted for? Checkmate, m'lady. <laughs> Damn. And just the talking. That talking like that is what I mean by the, I'm only hitting specific plot beats. But... We meet that fucking uh, blue-haired, liberal, little fucking commie bitch, and uh, she reveals through whatever the fuck that the da the deists or whatever have a plot to destroy the island everyone's on. It's just, they're going to do a terrorism. They're going to do a terrorism for reasons that I cannot remember. And if I did, I swear on Christ's name, I would not give a fuck about. Um, and it's they're just going to throw a big rock into it. So it's uh, we got to blow up the asteroid. So suddenly we are now also ripping off the uh, classic 1996, I believe, movie uh, Armageddon starring Bruce Willis. And uh, I think I think I think fucking Matt Damon's in there <laughs> or Ben Affleck. Don't want to miss a thing, but I'm missing you. So right around then, everybody figures out that Dalen is uh, Dalen. And so we start the other chunk immediately at the same time of 
He's got to go try to save the world, by which I mean this brick of whatever the fuck, because they're throwing a big rock at it. Don't it's space magic. It's space magic reasons rock falling right now uh, because of communists. And he's like, I've got to go stop this right now before it hits the thing. But I can only use my super magic fuckboy powers. Um, and his uh, rape victim finds out that he is who he is, and so does Arik. And so they're both trying to take him out because Arik reveals in one of the most I don't give a fuck reveals of all time that he is secretly Che Guevara the whole time. He he is Che Guevara to fucking uh. W- w- to to fucking Dalis's Batista, so to say, he led the revolution that overthrew Dalis so successfully that Dalis just kind of left a bit, and everyone forgot about him. <laughs> and and they fight, and uh, Dalen wins or loses. Dalen gets killed, and it's really boring. This is the big one of the many big climactic fights at the end of this thing. He fights Dalen. Dalen loses and gets stabbed through the chest. And he's like, finally, I've got what I want and I get to die. And then he's like, he brings him back. He says, I forgive you uh, for all of the shit that you did because I feel like you could be a good guy because I've been traveling with you for a little while. And I see that you have some good in you, which is first off, just not true. It, you you have been walking around with a guy who is a mass murderer and a mass rapist, who has never coped to his crimes, who lied to you about doing them, um, and the most you can say is he kind of like slaughtered the crews of two ships and saved some girls, but you could have done that without literally doing kin slaying and uh, executing a guy in the most profane and barbaric way possible. Because he kind of just lost his cool a bit, but not even lost his cool a bit. He like thought it through. Like he are he he premeditated the gruesome and insanely over the top murder of someone he'd already beaten in combat. So he is a man without pride or honor. There is literally nothing whatsoever redeemable about him other than he's basically like a Nazi scientist. This is what I was thinking toward the end. And the Nazi scientist vibe comes back where it's like, he did some shit. 1938 to 1945. We're not going to bring it up. But aspirin. Y'all like aspirin, right? We might not have it without him. Like, literally, he did not help make aspirin. Hold on now, citizen. Hold that thought. We'll get back to it. They fight. He comes back. Okay, so he gets superpowers. They go. At some point during this, he beats up his rape victim again. Whoopsie doodle. Um, she, they saved the world during this, the other black guy who was boring as fuck and talked about his hard dick a bunch. He dies too. Sorry. Um, and a bunch of the arch knights die who are important. Uh, no one cares. Um, then we go to Dalis's trial, which is the last like hour and 15 minutes of it. And I feel like it was supposed to be like John Galt's thing. That you always hear about in the fucking Atlas Shrugged. Like, who is John Galt? The John Galt talking for 10 hours about shit. Uh, unironically, boring as fuck. Um, all these people come forward and then they're like, hey, uh, he murdered my family. Hey, he's a fucking rapist. Like, he literally raped me. I am a rape victim. I am here right now. During this, we get to see the most profane shit happen. This is unironically like... Shadiversity as a human being has passed beyond forgiveness. He is actually a bad person IRL because these are things that he is articulating through his character. During these depositions of rape victims, some of them have children and some of them don't. The only ones who are given a voice are the ones with children, all of whom say Dalen's disgusting and I hate him. But without him sexually assaulting me, I wouldn't have my child the light of my life. This happens, I think, no less than three times. One of the ladies like, he was actually pretty nice to me and now I have a kid. Then he goes on to describe all the women who did not have kids 
as being suspiciously more upset about being raped because they didn't have kids. So his articulation is that women who are raped are generally only upset about it because they don't get pregnant. For this, I now feel justified in all of my criticisms of Shadowversity because that is the most profanely, th profanely evil thought I've ever seen articulated in a book outside, like, outside of something like Mein Kampf th that, that is literally equivalent to his real-life beliefs. Um, that, that these women who have been ruined by his own words are only especially upset about being sexually assaulted because they did not also have to bear their rapist child and that the ones that did bear their rapist child all feel a lot better about the circumstances. That is literally evil. Shadowversity, if you're reading back through this, at any, you're a bad person for that. You're not beyond forgiveness, um, but you are a bad person for articulating it. That is an evil thought, a fundamentally evil thought. It is without any basis in reality. I, yet again, I implore you at any point to just go and look up online on YouTube. You can read the depositions if you don't want to see all the crying, the screaming, the tears, people having breakdowns. You can go just experience the real life deposition of a rape victim at any time you want. You can get online and listen to what they have to say about their real life experiences. I am telling you, it, it'll it'll probably be a bit of an eye opener for you if you have eyes to open. But I gotta say, that shit, fucking weak, disgusting. In fact, deplorable. You are a lesser version of the human being you could be for harboring thoughts that disgusting inside your brain. And I believe. It is incumbent on me to say that and for that idea to be spread to other people because that shit is beyond the fucking pale. And if it wasn't just, if it was one off thing, it would be more forgivable, but it seems like it's part of a pattern of behavior inside and outside of this book that I think is literally endemic to you as a person speaking through this character and articulating your philosophies. It is... Beyond the pale. Beyond forgiveness. It is a disgusting thing to say, to think. I hope beyond hope you don't say that shit to your kids. I, if you are a good father, you will never fucking utter those words to your own children. That is a direct statement. I don't care how bad people feel about that. Don't ever say that to your kids. I hope your wife has at some point told you that that's not an okay thing to think. And that you, she just never read this. Beyond the pale. But I, I digress. That's basically almost the end of the book. Uh, it ends, of course, with everyone saying, oh, okay, I guess we're going to have to sentence Dalis to death. And then they say, uh, hold on. And an old guy stands up in the audience and says, I want to declare Dalin a hero. This is after, a, th th I, you have to assume that this, this is a court proceeding, that the rape victims are still in there. An old guy stands up and he's like, I'm the senator from Milwaukee and I think... That Dalen should be declared a hero for all the good he's done. He saved the world that one time. <laughs> like, now is not the time, Grandpa. That lady was just crying up on the stands. I know this is Shad World, so she's a human. She's not a real human being. She's just a woman that has been sexually assaulted at some point. Might probably not married. Uh, so she's not a real human being. But like, try to try to have some some modicum of decency in your fucking heart. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. And so, of course, it, we're just getting through everything. There's a bunch of shitty-ass speeches. Half an hour of dog shit speeches and stuff. And we get to the end of it. And he is sentenced to basically go on adventures and save the world for forever or until he dies as one of the most important people in society. Uh, an arch knight. And he's just like, I could actually break out of my bonds at any time and continue doing anything I really hope that my 
my journey back to the light sticks because, you know, I do have that evil inside of me. And um, now that I'm more powerful than I was as a, a dictator, prolific rapist and mass murderer, that um, I guess that the light sticks and uh, I, I, I become a benefit to society. The book ends with him teaming up with his rape victim, uh, the woman from the earlier story who's actual like supportive male friend who just happened to be the my dick is strong guy. Uh, he's dead. So he teams up with his rapist who now has to walk around or his, his rape victim and now has to walk around with her rapist. I'm assuming for the entirety of uh, book two, if it ever exists. So if there is a book two, it will literally be Dalen's day out uh, part two Dalen in conversation with his, uh, uh, his, his child sexual abuse victim <laughs> as they journey across uh, the Everfall world. The end. Um, I can't say... I can't say that it's like literally the worst book i've ever read because i don't think there's a way to quantify this as being as how as what it is because it starts off as an attempt at a bad fantasy book and ends as the sociopathic screeds of a mentally debilitated bigoted pro-rape christian that it, like it is it, it it literally transitions from some 16-year-old's attempt at ripping off Brandon Sanderson into a sort of half-assed version of Mein Kampf for Libertarians. It is the most bizarre fucking book I have ever... I was like, okay, this is just generally Drek. It's pretty boring. It's a little edgy. For the first three quarters of it, the last four hours of this book should be fucking studied by people trying to prevent mass shootings. I I feel like anyone that enjoys the last chunks of this book or feels like vindicated in their beliefs because of it or finds a sense of comfort or community in the philosophies that it espouses and hammers to home um, should be put on a watch list should have their rights to bear arms stripped for them for the good of uh, humanity and generally just treated with a sense of uh, uh, pitying derision from the better built human beings around them. It is beyond the pale. As I have probably said too many times, one of the most profoundly insanely evil chunks I, I will get into i'm going to go ahead and read chat here in a second and take a break after that um but in, i'm just going to summarize my ideas uh about it real quick um I, I think i kind of already already did that but i will say there are chunks of this book that can be saved the last four hours of it have to be cut away permanently they are a larger stain Unironically, I thought I knew a lot about how kind of a like lame lolcal dickhead fucking Shadowversity was until I got to the last four hours of this book. And it was like, you're a bad guy. You're just a bad person. Like unironically, like, no one's ever called you out. Like no wonder you don't have any friends. Like, holy fuck. Jazza is such a cute like dude. He's an adorable little fucking I make Pokemon cards for kids shit crying about his fucking like gay friends being mistreated in fucking Canberra or whatever the fuck. Like I couldn't imagine some sweetheart like him fucking reading his older brother's book just in the dark in his bed. And his wife's like, Oh, Jason, how's, uh, how's fucking Chad's book? Is he, are you fucking getting on with it? He's like, I'll just, uh, I just don't want to talk about it. <laughs> just, just turning every page like this. Thinking about all the times he like ate cereal across the guy, across the table from the dude. It's been compared, uh, I think it's happening right here again, uh, to redo 
of uh, it, it's been a, a, compared to like redo of healer, which is something I've seen. I kind of enjoy redo of healer as being just absolute like fucking prono direct. Like it's hilarious over the top shitty. It's not trying to make any points. I feel like redo of healer is literally just like, I am fucking like cringe edge porn. It's just dog shit from the get go. It knows it. Everyone that worked on it knows it. It's tongue in cheek the whole time trying to just be, as over the top and ridiculous as it possibly can. I've seen some of the manga panels from it and the way that the guy who makes it draws faces, it's very clear he's taken the piss most of the time. I think Shad believes in this book holistically. I think he thinks it's probably good and if he doesn't, if he he has any issues with his own inability to write quality wise, he more than likely deeply believes in a lot of the philosophies espoused during it. And it's not one of those things you can hand wave away by saying like, well, no, Dalis is a bad guy. Everything he says is bad. Dalis is a, a fucking schizophrenic at best character in his development. And he does at time whip quite violently back and forth between like different uh different vibes of like whether or not this guy's being a mouthpiece for shad or not it's extremely evident when he is very obviously repeating shadiversity and his friends and associates online the libertarian uh center right american libertarian center right um screeds you know it, like literally word for word there's a chunk in this book where he extensively talks about um, open border policies being generally more dangerous than people give them credit for and that like destabilizing the like population build of an area is like really one of the biggest problems that like a country can face. That's stuff that's coming out of Dalen's mouth all the time. This articulation about these fucking assault victims at the end is fucking insane. It's fucking insane. Like I've seen so much edgy shit in my life. I you, Shad would have been better off never publishing this. It is it is literally disgusting. It was funny and like oh it's just like his AI art. It's a little creepy, a little porny, kind of sus. And then it goes to like dude, this is legitimately evil. There's it's no fuck there's no I will debate you on it. Shad, if you want to fucking Come down from wherever on your little fucking Pegasus and give me an extra 30 million views. I'll debate you on how fucked up all that shit you wrote at the end of this book is. If, if there's a Shadiversity fucking associate, drag yourself before the fucking court and present your fucking findings, your facts, your figures on why the fuck that shit's not just the most profoundly evil stuff to write. I, I, am, I am here for it. It's beyond the pale. I will say I'm going to do a little segment after this where I'm going to start playing some video games talking about how I would fix Shadow of the Conqueror if you want to stick around for that. Um, I'm going to do that and then I will also be taking questions for that after the break. I'm going to have to hop up, drink some water, reconnoiter, power up, and then we're going to hop into that. Um, but I will say that there is, without a doubt, no possible way to fix this book if you do not cut the last four hours completely off of it completely off of it literally from right after basically he beats blackheart and then if you cut right there yeah before he puts blackheart's ass uh on a fucking splintered deck railing and it just goes off into fucking edgy boy territory cut everything there passed away the rest of it actually does have aspects of it that are interesting to a degree and salvageable to a degree. Mind you, this is already a 14-hour book instead of an 18-hour book. And we'll get into that after the break. I will also read everybody's stuff before I start the break so I don't forget. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah, I just saw that. Cornelia, uh, hi, what's up? I, I thought that was Cornella telling a joke, but it's Cornelia. Uh, I'm going to scroll back here a little bit, trying to figure out. I'm, I'm just going to go back to around like nine. I guess, you know what? I'm going to have to go to top chat. 
Sorry, guys. I, I actually have a lot of chatters, and I can't look through all of these. You can see Tyler losing his mind. <laughs> Chad is literally one of the worst people on the internet. Women all want kids. Yes. This is a justification of why this terrible person is good. It's absolutely insanity. It depends on how he ends his character. Maybe he kills that dictator. No, he is the dictator. I like a word with Shad's wife away from Shad. Like, unironically, it's one of those, like, you know, blink if you need the fucking... Blink if you need to talk. <laughs> this is also why his art sucks. It radiates these beliefs. It, it That is fucking uh, 100% true. Actually, I do need to fucking just go back. Top chat cuts off, like, the last hour of chat. I'm so mad I'm an hour late. Sorry, Dust Rose. But don't worry. VOD gang is always there for you. Why, why can't I can't scroll back in chat? I have you guys have talked to me so much. I literally can't scroll back past like 942. So sorry, guys. Welcome to all the people that joined, by the way, while I was talking extensively. I just had to get all of that out. If I start perusing chat and reacting during long period, I would this would be going until like two in the morning. It would be just ridiculous. <laughs> Let's see if we go to a lower hell. Oh, absolutely. Holy shit. I've watched and read a number of reviews about this book and none of them mention the testimonies of the essay victims. I can't believe that hasn't been given more attention. I think it's unironically because a lot of people are afraid of bringing that up. I mean, it would be one of those, like if I thought this was going to be a big video and I actually made ads, this would absolutely be demonetized and fucking de algorithm for bringing up, you know, sexual assault and stuff. But it's, it's the fucking pinnacle point of the movie. It literally is them putting the guy on trial and weighing mass murder and rape against people who are still alive with their children that they were forced to bear. Cause I'm just going to assume Shad wouldn't even permit the existence. Well, actually no, the girl, sorry, the girl he has to team up with again, did get an abortion. My B, my B. God damn it. It is, it's fucking gross, but people don't want to fucking talk about that stuff. I think unironically, it probably a lot of people got filtered out early enough. I, I, there was points where I was like, man, if, if you guys literally shout out Voss Marionette, who I have not seen in chat in a while, Voss bought this book for me, Voss bad. Um, because I was just like, I will not spend money on that like whatever and then i was just like i'm gonna break down and get it because it was on kindle like super cheap it was like four dollars and i was like if somebody gives me fucking cash i'll fucking put this to the top of my reading list otherwise i'm gonna put it off or like do you guys want to give me that and then they gave me a little bit of cash for it and i'm like fuck i will i will actually listen to the whole thing because another version of me would have probably ducked out five or six hours in there's other books i have i get out i like get two hours into it i'm like i don't have the time in my life to dedicate to something that's just fucking boring but I did this. So some other people might have fucking jumped out way before they got to uh, the trial. But yeah, it's 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 literally the moral equivalent. Like literally, yeah, it's no, it's okay. <laughs> it's the fucking scene from Community. You can excuse racism? <laughs> like, I can excuse rape, but Jesus fucking Christ. Kirk Patty mentioned it in hers. Yeah, okay, fair enough. I gotta check out Kirk Patty's review. Unless it's like super long like mine, I probably don't have time for it, but guy probably learned about stuff from Hentai, wholeheartedly believes women owe when they pregnant or whatever. Worst combination is religious and nerdy. It that is unironically fucking true. If you go back and you look at a lot of the people who are like the worst fucking dictators in the world, they're all a bunch of fucking dorks. <laughs> like over and over again. Very bad R word aside, you have to keep in mind this is a genocidal maniac. But he's also presented like he's not. That's the crazy thing. They're like, this is post-redemption him and stuff. And, like, he's being good. Like, it doesn't make any fucking sense. That's what I'm saying. Like, the character's all over the place. But at a certain point, I really do get the vibe that, like, this is this is Shad's... Vi this is Shad's feeling about it. And Shad's own religious convictions literally agree with that. But I've never had one of them actually say it, the quiet part, out loud like he did in this book. His victim, who was a child, was all his victims, by the way, were also children, which he also tries to hand wave in a libertarian way because he's like, oh, they were all over the age of 14, which was the age of consent at the time. I should know because I like set the age of consent. 
<laughs> what the fuck? Unironically, too, like I know, like it's like, hey, man, did you know communism bad because Holodomor and in 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 Stalin and shit? Which you know, there's an argument in that, but also I think that this is just how legitimately a fucking libertarian would run their fucking country if they got a hold of one. <laughs> It's fucking gross. It feels like incel shit. Yes. I am legitimately having a hard time believing, believing he actually wrote this. I mean, I, I have the audible up. I can, if you guys, I'll fucking bring the audible up and I'll, I'll fucking scrub through and you can listen to it too. It's, it's there. I fucking, I heard it. <laughs> it's horrible. Cornelia. Hi, I'm new here. Really enjoy your videos. Thanks a bunch. Cornelia. Welcome to the West side. Holy shit. 53 viewers. Do we really? Oh, that's awesome. Hi everybody. I'm Tyler. Hey, this is a good time. If you're still here, you should like and subscribe to the channel. Like and subscribe. And uh, you can hear me do more stuff like this sometime in the future. This is not going to be the last bad book I read. I found out about Shadowversity's cringe as fuck comics gate friends. And I'm going to go through a bunch of their stuff too. And uh, and review it and critique it. And just see like really uh, if they actually are any good at what they do. <laughs> Um, I am so sorry. This is your first live stream. <laughs> Fair. Michael, if I'm Isekai in Everfall, I will make it my mission to imprison Dalen for life if he doesn't die when apprehended. Like, absolutely true. Like, this dude just gotta get cracked. At a certain point, like, even I'm like, I, I have, I have a threshold. You know, I'm, I'm not, I don't believe generally in the death penalty for most, like, civilian grade crimes because I just don't think it's kind of, like, worth it, you know, to do it. it it's a deep thing. But I feel like 20 years in prison as a general sentence for the vast majority of crimes is kind of like, okay, because you've ruined somebody's life at that point. And then if you get to the end of the 20, like with conditional release and they're still fucking crazy and you're like, well, we've been watching you in a box for 20 years and we're pretty sure you just do it again. We're just going to keep you in here an additional time. I think that that's kind of like the best of the bad situation, which is like, how do we punish people for the worst crimes? But like, also like, I'm cool with how we did Nuremberg. Like I'm down with fucking like Nazis strung up in fucking the middle of town squares, getting their fucking heads stoved in with table legs by crying old women. Like that's, that's also like peak justice for me. I'm a fan of it. I, I like it. I like it when, you know, the end of Schindler's list happens to people like Amon Goat. That's just, that's, that's a vibe for me. It fills me with not quite butterflies, but, um, the necessary buzzing horde of real flies that are necessary to, to deconstitute, um, corpse flesh and return it to the dust from which, uh, things will grow. New things will, will be risen. You know what I mean? <laughs> Um, Shad's outlook on politics is terrible too. Dalen is literally like, well, our current system might not be perfect, but it was better than it was under me. So stop complaining. Yes. I, I fucking read that part too. Cornelia just missed how the hero is excused, redeemed for CSA because the parents of his bastards are happy. They have children and suspiciously yeah, all of the people who hate him. Don't it's hard to say it's on our, it's like one of those things. Like, I can't believe you fucking I can't believe you said that <laughs> fucking disgusting. The dude who made Redo of Healer isn't trying to claim they're a brilliant novelist. Also true. I don't think that if you... I, I, I guarantee you well, the, well, whatever well, chapter well, they were on of Redo of describe. Healer before Japan passed that law where all the mangaka have to have their like faces out um, in public. I guarantee you that day and then the day for the next release, he was just like... I do like shopping at the 7-Eleven I go to. So why don't we just reconsider releasing this? <laughs> Redo of Healer is so over the top that it's enjoyable. It is really fucking hilarious at some time. I was talking about this earlier, not on this, but a different stream when people were bringing it up. That if you actually know a little bit about the production and stuff, like a tons of the stills and shit in the uh, thing are actual recreations of famous like classical paintings and like niche ones that not a lot of people know unless you probably had like an art degree, which is probably just the most funny like, hey, everybody, look, I, I know I know I'm working on Redo of Healer, but jobs for animators do not grow on trees. But check this out. I snuck. Uh, execution of of the revolutionaries into like this like one set isn't that fuck like 
You gotta give me credit for that. I know, I know what happens in the show. I know what fucking happens in the show. Cause I had to go to the storyboard meetings. But like, look what <laughs> shout out the animators that have to work on that weird shit. Oh. Oh no, not the cringe comic grip bait gate bros. They are they are the worst. Isn't he making a movie about his book? Apparently it's like completely been derailed and it's out of money. Um, because I don't think he knows how to organize something of that like magnitude. And it's really not the kind of thing you want to attempt at your first movie is like a high flying, uh, pirate hunting adventure set on floating islands that ends with, uh, Ayn Rand like trial where people come to the defense of, of, of CSA John Galt. <laughs> Tried to make a movie with a fed, yeah. Man, too many Nazi got free. That is true. Too many got cushy jobs in America. Side, yeah. Which is the other thing. That's the other articulation at the end of the book, is that a bunch of the people who are like, we are for Dalen re-entering society under certain privileges. It's like literally the Nazi argument, Nazi scientist argument. They're like, look, it was rough. You know, thirty-eight to forty-five was crazy. Buchenwald is a thing I feel like we all regret, even us over here. But this man made strides in, in, in fucking ball torture that will never be replicated by anyone. Like, we need this dude to be making fucking uh, biological agents for us. <laughs> we need their access to horrors beyond the human imagining uh, because where, where will we be without them? <laughs> What the fuck is Redo of Healer? Redo of Healer is like one of the worst anime ever. I actually reviewed it on my uh, my podcast, westsidefairytales.com. It's uh, one of the HLC episodes. It's like lost in time. But it's basically, um, you know how like you're playing Oblivion, right? And sometimes you're like, I'm bored. I'm sorry. I just dated myself. For you kids, you it would be Skyrim. You know how, or Skyrim mods. <laughs> You know, you're playing like Skyrim or, or, or some like game like that, right? Where you can actually kill all the NPCs. And then you're just like, I'm going to pause this and save it right now and just kill everybody. It's basically that, um, as an isekai. So like there was a healer guy, um, and he was mistreated by his party. It's all edgy. It's all 100% balls to the wall over the top. There are no good guys kind of thing. It's got fucking like gross softcore porn in it and all kinds of violence and shit. And he's a healer, but what he actually has is, like, the reconstruction technique that the fucking Plague Mask guy has in My Hero Academia, the overhaul. It's, like, that same thing. And so he can just basically, like, rewrite his character's code with, like, max hacks and just do anything. And so it's just him doing revenge on everybody. Um, and it's just literally the stupidest shit you've ever fucking seen. Uh cackling cackling like laughing at how dumb it was <laughs> I, I the reason reason i watched it was because i was like i was on fucking a four chance a board and people were like i can't believe they're getting away with it he gets away with it again I'm like i've got to watch this and like half of it is dull dishwater dull did not get a lot of money for it it is not a well-made anime but like it's just fucking hilariously bad hilariously over the top evil stupid bullshit if you like like a like a B horror movie where like it was definitely made by super low budget people and all the dumbest stuff is happening, same fucking thing. Same fucking thing, only it's a cartoon. Tyler missed some chat. I do I am missing chat now. I think it's it's a new world. Tyler she had tried to hire a round table of employee yes men too. Oh, of course. He's not going to hire any I don't know if you know this, but Shad actually is as good. I'm actually at uh, what you. I'm on professional level. Uh, if you've ever seen Kubrick, okay, uh, Stanley Kubrick, on uh, me, him, like this. You know, I've seen it. <laughs> Do you recommend watching Redo of Healer? Fuck no. Do not watch that anime. <laughs> you have to be. You have to be bored, stoned. And have literally nothing better to do than watch it. It was one of those, I heard about it like well after it came out. 
and I think there's only like 12 episodes of it. It's like a really short, like fucking single core thing. And I just watched all of it, like start to finish, skipping through giant chunks because whole bits of it are so graphic that they couldn't air it in Japan. And it's just literally the whole screen blurred with sound effects. And then sometimes the sound effects cut off and it's just a black screen while the thing ticks. <laughs> like, I guess it's imagination time. <laughs> it's it's literally, it, it's it's completely terrible. But if you're like, if you're into extremely niche anime circles and you want to like flex, it, it, it's only so that you can say you've seen it at like at times like this. It's one. Of the, it's pretty much it. It's like watching goofy shit, like fuck, like Cell Saga that no one fucking talks about anymore. He choreographed himself. Yes, I know that. I know that. Wait, you can play Skyrim without mods, apparently. Tyler, have you read The Autumn of the Patriarch? This is how you write Dictator. I have not even heard of it. Like, I'm not trying to dissuade you that it's per trash. Just take it as well. If you enjoy trash, you enjoy it. It is f absolutely trash. It is also a harem anime. It is a harem anime, isn't it? <laughs> Didn't hear my Nuremberg comment. I'm sorry, dude. It's it, fucking chats. Chats blowing through nowadays. Don't watch it so boring and bad. It's fair enough. Yeah. It's literally only if you're like, if you're on a, yeah, you're definitely probably past the time to even like pop in and understand the memes and like the jokes about what's, what's happening. It's one of those things that you have to be involved, like in the community when it's coming out to like talk about how bad it is to get like the enjoyment out of it. Um, it's like one of those things like Uremu or whatever, like what, you know what that creepy fucking, like the guy's dating is like little daughter or not his daughter, his little sister anime. I didn't even watch that one, but like there was fucking mad memes about it and stuff. And then when it ended, I was like, Oh, should I check this out? And I was talking to someone else like, no, if you're not fucking watching it, like basically while it's fresh in everyone's mind and everyone's making fun of it. Cause it's just like the dog shit anime of the season. It's completely, completely not worth it. I think it just sticks out because it was like kind of at the height of the anime, not the anime, the height of the like, we all hate Isekai now. We hate Isekai fucking anime. And Mushoku Tensei hadn't come out to be like, hey, what if the fucking weirdest, creepiest guy was in the most best animated shit of the fucking season <laughs> to kind of just tug at your heartstrings? The story implies that Blackheart's mother raised him in poverty, which is probably why he became a pirate, because Dale and S.A. ruined her marriage prospects, but this is never explored in the story. Of course it's not. Because, you know, having a criminal with a backstory would suggest that there's a, probably a potential for redemption for them as well. You know, which, which you don't want to do. Remo, yeah. It's a trash fire anime that's fun to watch, ironically, at the time. Basically, yeah. And you have to be really, like, in the circles to be watching trash fire anime. If you're not, you're going to you're gonna turn it in, turn it on, probably watch, like, five minutes of it and be like, <laughs> strong judgments against everybody who's ever <laughs> mentioned this shit in public. <laughs> like, Tyler, you can absolutely write slurs and gross scenes in a good way. Shad is just really bad at it. Yeah, I know that, bud. I'm a fucking writer, you goof. Um, with all that said, I am going to take a real quick break and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk about fucking, uh, how, how we could potentially fix shadow of the conqueror minus obviously the very end of it. So thanks first off to everybody that stopped out tonight. Apparently we have a bunch of viewers. I'm not going to look at the number cause that shit makes me fucking nervous. I just like to pretend like it's still me and like three people in here because then it's, it, it's kind of like imagining everyone in the audience in their, their underwear kind of trick for public speaking. Only it's pretending the number's not high, pretending the number's low. If you're just stopping through for the first time, you're enjoying this. If you're watching back through the VOD, Shout out to my VOD gang members. Please take a second, like, subscribe to the stream. We are trying to grow this thing next to a thousand. I think I'm going to hit the 500 goal tonight. So, unironically, if you uh, enjoy this content and this community, you literally have 15 more subscribers to hop into our Discord, discord.com slash the link underneath, and join the Discord to get your special stream day one's roll. Um, I'm taking it off of, of new people getting it after we hit 500 and I remember 
to do it. So if you want to get fucking hipster credit, you're like, fuck, this is my first stream. I don't even know if I want to fucking be here. Hey, dude, consider it an investment in the potential future of, I don't know, like two years from now, if I'm actually still doing this and I'm not dead from a Shadiversity fan coming and hacking my head off with a goddamn insert weird name of a French sword I can't pronounce here, then fuck, you'll be like, hey man, you guys remember, uh, you guys remember the Shadiversity stream? I was there. Check out the blue logo. You can do that right now. But in general, just like, subscribe to the stream if you are enjoying this content. I know there's a bunch of people that joined. Um, this is a special episode. So this is one where I literally had to talk to the camera the entire time to stay on focus. As you can see, it was three straight hours of fucking talking about this goddamn thing to get it done. Normally, I talk to chat almost the entire time. If I would have done that, we would have been up till one. And the show usually only goes from around 7.30 to around 11.30 so I can get off and go the fuck to bed because I am in my mid-30s and uh, I've been staying up till like 1.30 sometimes reading the Discord after I get off because everybody's so fucking interesting and actually into the same stuff that I'm into that I end up like with like a crazy sort of like exhaustion headache the next day. You get hung over in your mid-30s from not sleeping enough. You, I don't even drink alcohol anymore and I get hangovers from not falling asleep. But check it out. Uh, like the stream, sub sub, subscribe, comment VOD gang if you're watching back through this uh, tomorrow, a few days later, a few years from now. And um, if I if I see it, I'll like it and I'll say like, hey man, you're fucking you're a cool guy. But enjoy our new um, intercession screen. This is um, my new middle screen. So check this out. Oh look, it's a new one. Oh check it out, everybody. Say hi, Miss Fennec. She said she's going to be my little uh, mascot for a little while. Because I didn't have any other art that fit in that space. <laughs> okay, I'll be back in just a second, everybody.
Okay, I'm back. Sorry. I think I said the music was a little loud on this one. That might be the case. I probably gotta fucking... I gotta, I gotta squelch that out a bit. I think you would have had a great laugh at the interview Shad had with Brandon Sanderson because of Shadow of the Conqueror that led to Shad being a historical consultant for Rhythm of War? What? I might have to put that on my, my coming up because that might be a whole big thing, but that's insanity. I guess it's like the Mormons stick together, though. That would, that, that's that's like a case uh, of the thing, you know. They, they're they always trying to hook them up. But yeah, definitely. Get that, put that in the Discord, and I will check it out later. Oh, I mean, you missed it. There you go. All right. How do I use the Discord invite? Uh, oh, are you guys helping them out? Thank you so much. Nosserton the first. Correction on my first my previous statement. Just check the male to female ratio for redo of healer is more accurately a 50-50. It has a higher female viewer base than most anime. Especially anime in the fucking isekai genre. That's actually that's like that's still wild if people don't you know. Like a lot of those like sword art online and stuff, it's like 70 fucking 30, 80, 20 guys, you know. By the way, if you're new to the stream, everybody say hi to uh Senor Sweet Cheek. This is uh, Mr. Sweet Cheeks on the bunny cam. He got his treat for the night. He's out here looking for more. Hey. Oh, no, there's no more. Here you go. Hell yeah. He's like, I don't give a fuck about pets. I want more sugar candies. Oh, I should just leave that up for a second. This is some ideal bunny cam. By the way, if you guys like Sweet Cheeks, you can always, uh, exclamation point, tip the stream and, uh, and say thank you to Sweet Cheeks for popping by. If you do a dollar or a dollar to 10, it'll make your little, your image, your thing come up and it'll say words. And then if you do like $10 or more, it's TTS. I can't hear it though. A black rabbit puppet game reference. I wish he was here first, but I really want to fucking kill the black rabbits in that game and get the fucking rabbit head so bad. Honestly, I used to like Shad, his content on fantasy IRL weapons and his fight scene autopsy series was super cool. But now between the AI art stuff and this book, I can't look at them the same. It's it, it it's pretty serious. The AI art stuff, if he hadn't like been on his seventeenth doubling down, I don't know what your I don't know what that number is at that point. Quadrillion down. <laughs> um it would have been not that bad. It would have been not that big of a fucking deal. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like you could probably come back from it to a degree. But the man keeps just fucking going <laughs> uh, oh so people are asking uh bunny thing photosynthesizer asks friendly little guy is he a rex rabbit i don't think so hold on a second is he a rex babe yes he is a rex i always forget the types of rabbits my wife has been a rabbit person her entire life and uh we've had four rabbits together one of them unfortunately passed away um several years ago jacques and then we have Marcel, who is a Himalayan dwarf. Jacques was also a Himalayan dwarf rabbit. And then Rosie is a double lion head. She's the one that's right here behind me. She's a gigantic flesh. She looked like a caterpillar when we got her. And we actually have to regularly cut her hair all over her body so that it doesn't like get in the workings of her existence because she gets so much. She couldn't see because her hair is a genetic ma like abnormality that grows over her eyes. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. I actually agree with a lot of Shad's political views, but the AI thing was just so bad I had to stop supporting anything he's involved in. Yeah, the fucking the AI shit's just like way too much, man. Okay, so I am going to switch to the second half of the show, which is like the second, like third quarter of the show, and play a little bit of Lies of P. Because I didn't even get to play any last night, man. I didn't even get to play any last night. I really want to. 
Boggy Psycho. But while we're here, we're going to be talking. I can take some. I can now take questions uh, if there are like specific statements that you want me to address about it because I'll be able to look at chat because I have a second screen now, like old big boy. And uh, I'm going to talk about how I think the thing could be fixed, which I believe uh, Shep has been asking for repeatedly. Controversial opinion, cats are cuter. You're going to get fucking banned with that kind of talk. I don't know how cats could be cuter than a bunny. They're little bunnies. Did you check the Discord yet? I did not. Um, give me a second. I might check the Discord. Let's see. Is it short? Because I do want to just play games right now. <laughs> After all of that talking. Jesus Christ. Uh, some of the stuff that gets to, goes to the Discord, I will check in a like future time. Uh, but Let's see, Tyler, you must see this as I guess isn't here. Brandon Sadison versus Shad Ambrose. Why does he always make such weird faces? How it felt. Oh yeah. Okay, I am actually going to save these, but I will bring them up so that I have them in my watch later. Yeah, because they're going to be long. I don't have time for them tonight, but I'll definitely, I'll definitely cover them in the future because that's fucking fascinating to me. Especially because I watch like, I, I actually like Sanderson stuff. It's not like you know groundbreaking fucking. It's the the end all be all fantasy or anything like that. But it's really enjoyable, um, and and I I enjoy watching. It. Okay, I've got those in my... No, I don't. No, where'd that other one go? Shadowversity! Stop! Stop! Stop it! <laughs> God damn, auto-played. <coughs> While you're on Discord, check out my clip of you. Damn, we dropped to only 35 viewers. That's fucking insanity. Don't forget to make sure the game is on screen. Don't worry, I will. I'm just not doing it on yet. Will you take requests? Uh, no more video requests tonight, except for Doc can get me one. I don't even own one, but ferrets are the best fuzzy boys. They're adorable looking, but ferrets fucking stink, buddy. Ferrets are some stinky fellas. Clips and stream memes. I mean, she's not a real human being. She's just a woman that has been sexually assaulted at some point. Might Probably not married. Uh, so she's not a real human being. God damn it, dude. Fuck off, Drime. <laughs> God damn it, man. This dude, is a, this dude is a fucking clip assassin. Like, how are you getting that out that fast? It's mon absolutely monstrous. Leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, um, I will I will check out all those stream meme stuffs in the future, but I do want to try to get the rest of the little bit of content I had as an idea for the today out and then also play some bubbly game. Ugh, has Shad blocked you on Twitter? Saw some guy with a few thousand views talk about Shad and was suddenly blocked. Shad seems to be searching himself a lot. I never mentioned him on Twitter because I thought that might be the case and I want to uh, keep the lines of... Uh, communication open, so to say, because it's easier for me to go off my main and just like bookmark stupid shit that he says. Sanderson's creative writing lectures are generally good stuff. Mm. Hey man, network is finally back up. What would happen? What was that? Was I down? Ten people joined Discord while you were on break. By the way, oh fuck! Hey, welcome guys. I really like Prince of Thorns, my favorite fantasy. Tyler, does your book feature our scenes and or gross scenes? Yes. I wonder how good writers write those. The only ones I remember are from Blood Meridian. Uh, you'll have to check them out when the books come out. You should have left your chair to react while you took a break. You wouldn't have lost so many viewers. No, I refuse. I just put up uh, I just put up cute little uh, Miss Fennec. I'm going to color her in here at some point. And uh, I think I just I, I drew her... Um, for reasons a little while ago and I wanted to have uh, like a little like kind of mascot for the thing and then I was just enjoying drawing her so much that I think it would be fucking fun to have her. For a second it was going to be like Lan's Necked Waifu but I feel like that was that that's too kind of out of my control but doing Lan's Necked Waifus of, of Miss Fennec or something would be pretty funny and then having other people draw Miss Fennec I think would be pretty funny too 
which I think already Uniblazer has drawn drawn her like the second I the second I posted it, Uniblazer drew another one of her. No, for almost twelve hours a phone provider went down in Australia. Holy fuck, that sucks. I don't blame Sanderson because it wasn't until after the book came out that Shad let all his political beefs out. Fair enough. Tyler, how many rape victims love their abusers in your, your book? Uh, none? Especially the, the one that just came out? Absolutely none. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, there also just aren't any. It's not something I go into very often. Um, there's, I think the closest that you would get to one is a secondary character. It's, it's kind of hard to describe the character without getting into spoilers, but it is a, uh, a character in um, Scars in Time, which is one of the long form stories. Uh, on my podcast, she has a very, very complicated um, relationship with a long-term abuser who was also her husband, so that's why it's complicated. It's a really, really fucked up relationship, but she also, like, deeply fucking hates him and also kind of doesn't because it's, she's just in a fucked up thing, which I actually base that more on actual real-life stuff I've heard about or, or know. Um, but yeah, I think I was going to say... Yes, yeah, so I went here, so I've got to go and continue on this area. Oh, is West by God out and available now? Technically, its ebook is, but I don't want to talk about it too much because I want there to be actually like a large release announcement that wasn't done. I didn't know that that was going to be done, that they were going to release the ebook and not have the print and hardcover out. But yeah, you could buy West by God right now on ebook if you wanted to. West, uh, well, you just go to westsidefairiestales.com and then all that stuff. Good, thank you for being so cultured. Yeah, I'm based, dude. Are the dogs in this game worse than the Soulsborn dogs or about the same level of annoying? Um, I would say they are considerably less annoying. I, it might be because I know how to deal with Soulsborn dogs already. Um, but like... I think the people, they give you a lot of time to deal with them. There are different varieties that are more dangerous, but they also do I not do 15 hit charging stun locks place. and like so ultra insta kills and like 17 dog ganks in a hallway. So like it is, it's, it's literally one of those things where I would say those dogs would probably be more irritating just as they are in a normal Souls game because Souls games love to fucking irritate you with the dogs. They just set it up to be dog shit from the beginning. This is this is very sus right here. That's very strange. Okay, I'm going to talk to chat for a little bit and then I'm going to start talking about this thing again. Now I'm going to want a hard copy. I would hold on. Hey, it's Chariot! I'll have to check back in the VOD later to see your thoughts on Chad's book. I'm reading through it right now for my own review and it's something else. Also, Lies of P... Looks really interesting. It's great. Um, I'll tell you right now, and it's one of those things that I feel like I have to tell everybody uh, that might be thinking about looking at it. Uh, hard, hard, hard content warning for the last, like, four hours of the book. The last, basically, like, quarter of it. It There is some content in there that is beyond the pale. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, fucking it's a little much um to a brick wall. we talked about it but yeah I, I i would i would definitely if you're the kind of person that doesn't want to see that kind of stuff to your friend there's a moment but there's there's a moment true, and then after that moment it only goes downhill <laughs> we're going to need to consult you got that right sister our pal is sure to help us black cat is fucking adorable is he's my favorite he's a little shithead or a little shit a heel. moment please my young brother here is hey, slowly but surely hey, losing everybody. his very sight, Whoa. his windows to the world, Whoa. to a it's terrible, a a slow puppy. working illness. That is why game, I seek the gold cool coin for it. It's said to work What's miracles. Yeah. And do I ever you need one? The alchemists give us What's just you? enough to keep him going, oh, but boy. not enough to That's cure. Everything. And never what they promised. Oh, we can't rely oh, on those oh, crucible oh, kissing oh, wizards. Please, don't make me beg. He needs this. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody say hi to Bug. Besides, 
Uh, that's Buck, my dog, if you are new to the stream. He comes in here, too, and hangs out sometimes. When my wife is home, he only wants to hang out with my wife. She basically was just like, go get on camera, little dude. And so he popped in here. But he'll he'll get up and leave and go hang out with her soon. But when I when when, when she's gone and I stream without her, he'll come in here and lay down in front of the camera the entire time. The gold coin fruit is the only thing that helps. We knew you. That's right. I liked you from the start, you know. Ignore this one. When he gets excited or just feels happy. On that note, I hate to borrow and run, but we have another request from the alchemist to take care of, so we will be staying behind. You'll need to go on without us, so... I, I think I'm gonna head out and watch well. the next stuff back on the VOD later. Alright, see you later, Doc. Your kindness. Hey, hey, look, furries. <laughs> yeah. A small token, but it's a gift from the heart. Jerry, I know your content. Thanks for no, your don't. great quality of content. I like your stuff. I'm a subber. I'm glad to see you here. Oh, yeah, hi. Hey. Everybody say hi to Cherry. She's great. Um, to do, do chariot, not cherry. Low bug. I don't like that voice acting. It's like the uh, Soulsborn voice I acting on purpose. You to bring us a damn thing, and yet, I think. thank you, truly. I'm not saying I'm ready to set up housekeeping or that. They, I feel like they just give everybody these like lines to read ahead of time, and like they're just like, hey, wow. we're gonna lock you in. Uh, you need me? I was surprised. The Isle of Alchemists, you say? It is their secret island. What about there could still be a way? My research, well, Pulcinella okay. did a lot of the heavy lifting, has led me to believe you can find one. No, I'm not going to tell you the details yet. Uh, okay, so do I go back to where the Baron Swamp was? Tyler, would you call the main character of Shad's book a Gary Stu? I mean, yeah, I hate those terms because they're so like I don't know. They're just they just got like a like a 2010 internet ick about them. They're like, I don't I don't fucking like saying Mary Sue, Gary Stu kind of thing. And also nothing really ever fits it perfectly, but I think in this one specific case, it almost is. Like, yeah. I think the only reason he wouldn't be is because technically he has a character flaw in that um, he just says that he has certain types of character flaws. He, he's just way too um, hyper competent. Maybe like a bit, but like the Mary Sue is also supposed to be like everybody's friend. Everyone likes her. Everyone that meets her falls in love with her. Everyone that she talks to, like she fixes their problems just by being near them, that kind of stuff. A better Gary Stu is definitely um, Kurito, right? Am I saying that? Kurito from uh, Sword Art Online. That guy's like, he's the, the, the fucking, the, the one. The one. Like, go to. District. Hmm. Is it? Is this where? You, and there's like the thing. I don't think so. I might be wrong. Uh, sure. Yeah, I'm usually open-minded with fantasy books. Was always a big pulp fantasy reader, so I enjoyed a lot of trash. But Chad's style is just really not that great. No, it's like, it's bad, badly written, right? And it's like corny. But like, I, I'm, I'm the same way. I've read like other pulp fantasy and stuff too, especially when I was younger. So like, I kind of have a special spot in my heart for like trash. And especially if it's fun, which is what I was telling everyone earlier. But, like, this book is just insanely fucking boring. Like, there's just so many parts where it's like, could you shut the fuck up? <laughs> just shut the fuck up and get to the next set piece because I'm sick of you talking. I'm sick of you explaining stuff over and over and over. Paragraphs upon paragraphs upon paragraphs of the same fucking shit. Again and again and again. It's just miserable. I think I got over the next place. Um, do, 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 do. Would you say there's a content warning for the game? Can you elaborate on what kind of we're talking about? Is it gore or like essay? This game doesn't have a content warning. No, no, no. The book we were talking about has a content warning. This game's fine. Uh, I, this game is, I think this is like probably good for like 13 year olds, you know? Like one of the, like a PG 13 type game. I don't know. I, don't, I can't remember what the fucking ESRB ratings are anymore, but. It, it might get ESRB mature for like some violence, but you're mostly fighting like puppets and zombies with like purple blood. I think I've killed actually like four total real human beings in the entire game so far. 
And uh, even that's not particularly gory or dangerous or something. It's just like, you know, mild fantasy action type deal. Chad likes the sound of his own voice, and so does his own self-insert. That is a fucking fact. Forging, seek it, sequence, and brisinger. Get her toes the worst, absolutely. Man, I wanted to like sword art so much. There was like a moment. I saw a view, a review on that from... I think it was like the first Mother's Basement review I ever saw on YouTube. Uh, was about Sword Art Online, and it's because it's the one where he puts the one girl's fucking, like, whole-ass crotch in the fucking, like, screen, so I'm like, alright, you got me. I'm a red-blooded American male. I'll fucking ch I'll click on this fucking porno shit. Whatever, buddy. I'm good. So I was like, oh, what is this? Okay, this is the most trash anime ever, and I watched that, and I was like, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not completely dissuaded. And I ended up watching it anyway, but he does say, like, the first few episodes of Sword Art Online are actually, like, super solid. Basically up until the, like, weird Santa Claus episode. And then everything after that, it just gets super hitch and skitter in quality until the point where you're like, I remember when things were good, but I can't quite put my finger on when that moment was. And then there's just always, like, a really good, super, what do you call that, um... Sa Sasuga, Sasuga, whatever animation where the animation's real fucking clean and quick and, and, and like smooth. Uh, and you're like, oh, fuck, I could watch this a little bit more. And then it's just trash again. And then when you get to the end of fucking like Sword Art Online season one and it's like his little daughter fairy thing that grants wishes, it's like, oh man, stab my fingers into my eye sockets. It's so miserable. The SWE people did such a good job pairing SAO that I literally cannot remember the original show, not even a little bit. What is that, uh, SWE? Oh, no, you're all good, man. Every villain is a rapist in Sword Online. Yeah, a lot of them are, yeah. I say it would have been much better if they would have dropped the weird cousin loving. Yeah, in like the second season and stuff. The third season was the most promising with like the gun, the gun game. But of course, like Kirito is like I don't know, like gender swapped or whatever. It's a strange, it's a strange season. But I did like the I did like the lightsaber smacking bullets out of the way. That was fun. In this issue of Vanini's Guide, we'd like to introduce a special place different from our previously featured attractions, and we don't mean special in a good way. Of course, it may cater to a few people with peculiar tastes, but if you're an adventurer who wants to know all about Krat, it's worth learning about its shadows. In that sense, the Barren Swamp is the area that showcases Krat's shadows well. The Barren Sh Swamp is where scrapped puppets are discarded. Because it's composed of swamps and ravines, it wasn't part of the city's development. In the past, it was briefly a coal mine. Hey, shout out. But was soon forgotten because of the Ergo discovery. Later, a few shrewd factory businesses concerned about scrapped puppets began to dispose of them illegally here, turning the swamp into what it is now. Full of discarded puppets and corrupted animals, it's Crot's grave itself. Rating 2.5 out of 5, an attraction for those who want to see Crot's shadow. Long boots are a must. Luckily, the city announced that they turned the barren swamp into a park. <laughs> How American. With the exhibition just around the corner, so we're seeing some hope here. It's a living grave of hell. How about seeing this kind of place with your own eyes before anything's developed? Good or bad, an experience is an experience. Reporter Maduro. Tyler, can you fix the second part of Shad Book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too many people were talking to me all at once. Something Witty Entertainment YouTube channel has been making SAO Abridged. Oh, the SOA, SAO Abridged. I've heard of those. I've heard those are pretty funny. I might watch some of those. I'm doing a... Uh, one of the segments I want to do coming up is um, kind of like a viewer pick and like help me see different... Something's kind of blast through here. Uh, viewer pick different um, like indie animations and small indie animation creators on on YouTube or even like some good like ones that I might not have heard of that are larger and I want to share some with you all so you know you can kind of expand your horizons just a little bit beyond me canon not that me canon's not fucking amazing uh, but that's something I want to do going forward but yeah this place is how to fix uh, okay, there's can no you shut the fuck up Gemini you useless piece of shit no one wanted you to fucking talk right now I'm trying to have a goddamn conversation with chat you stupid fucking thing okay so anyway Shad's uh Shad's book would be infinitely better if it was first off shorter um 
Damn it. I missed that one. Give it. <sighs> Give me just a second. This one's actually like an irritating guy to fight. Boom. Boom. There we go. Okay. So, obviously, it needs to be shorter. Um, but plot-wise is probably where most of the stuff... Okay, I guess I don't get that. Plot-wise is where most of the stuff, I think, really needs to be adjusted. First off, Dalen shouldn't be Dalis's younger self. It, he should just be literally Dalen the Bastard. He should be Dalen the Bastard, son of Dalis the Conqueror, right? And he should just be one of maybe like the 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 hundred or two hundred bastards of this pro prolific fucking rapist all of whom are gifted with this piece of shit's um powers and then instead of having it be just this terrible fucking redemption story you could have a deeper meditation on the nature of like you know familial evil and whether or not certain aspects of bad personalities get put down because he is like he's got some weird like connection you know to him he you know i don't know he he kind of like he can hear his father's voice in his head he's like one of the like he's one of like the 200 dark bastards right we'll just say it like that who are from like this experimental thing that daily Dalens did when he was just essaying all of these people girls included um, in order to try to make, like, some, do some sort of fucking, uh, like, genetics, eugenics program to make, like, the ideal super soldier, right? Which would fit in perfectly. <laughs> These fucking guys are awesome. Uh, it would fit in perfectly with, you know, Shad's audience and stuff. You can do eugenics and then they can enjoy it. You know, you don't have to fucking make it all fucking lib, cuck, fucking happy bullshit like, uh, I would prefer. You can make it dog shit. Um, oh shit, I knew he was going to hit me with that. Um, and so, like, right, these 200 are whatever. A bunch of them died. Some of them have gone insane. Dalis specifically was overthrown, and the country's in chaos, right? And because it's in chaos, you know, there's, like, a bunch of people that are trying to get higher up and stuff, and the, 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 the one thing that everybody's worried about is the last of the 200 bastards are coming to, uh, they're coming of age where they're all going to be like 17, 18 years old, whatever, if you want to have it be like a fucking anime. And their powers are awakening because fucking puberty, I guess. Okay, you motherfuckers are shooting at me and that's some bullshit. And so like, um, he's like one of these guys, they're all like, all of them are either on the run uh, from or in the custody of the Arch Knights who like obviously want to keep a fucking lid on this thing because it's super dangerous to have a bunch of like level 10,000 fucking partially insane eugenics experiments running around with superpowers possibly fucking dominating the world and so like that can be the big focus and like we'll have Dalen be one of them and we find out that Dalen was raised by um, instead of like, bro, I am fucking having a conversation, you fat son of a bitch. Why are you, you motherfucker? God damn it. Um, Dalen, you know, was raised by somebody that was close to the king, right? He's like, I, like, it can be the Arik character. And I remember the king before he lost his mind. It's not just sickness that drove Dalen or Dalus the ba Dalus the conqueror to, to, to violence. And so, like, the, the kid is, like, always just constantly worried that his, like, worst impulses are going to be, like, this thing that drives him fucking, like, over the top and stuff. And um, he feels like he's, you know, he can't escape the shadow of his father. And then it can literally be, quite literally, the fucking shadow of the Conqueror, by the way. Because it's the literal shadow of a child trying to, like, understand his relationship with his estranged, uh, unloving father who, like, you know, just made him and a hundred other kids uncaring. So you can have that, and then instead of um, all this hyper-focus on bullshit the entire time, um, you can have him meeting all of these characters from his father's past, some of whom remember him fondly, and some of whom were his most 
insanely deprived victims and getting to understand them and you know like why they hate his father and why maybe they hate him and don't care that he has like you know like i'm not my dad and say i don't care you look enough like him that literally it's i just want to fuck i just want to see you die i don't care and like trying to understand like that aspect and you know all of this sort of stuff and the whole first book can just be the entire thing about the 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 ship instead of him getting on the ship at the last second have fucking uh blackheart be this semi-sympathetic but clearly still kind of a fucking absolute shit heel bad guy character who takes Dalis in takes him away from eric and where eric is always being like hey you need to focus on like the kindness and you need to be like forgiving of people Dalen, who is just still a child and doesn't know better, can be like, um, you know, fucking, I don't know, like, if I want to be kind to these people. Like, if I have these abilities, just like my father had, like, shouldn't I be using them to fucking kill evil people? Like, if an evil person dies, well, and then you have, like, a deeper meditation on the nature of, like, forgiveness and rehabilitation and, like, who should and shouldn't have, like, power over life and death. And as him and Blackheart get closer and closer together he finds that blackheart does do stuff that he cannot forgive blackheart does engage in slave trading we don't need to have it be just a bunch of goddamn like sa victims all the time because you can get the same point across by just having him be a slave trader you know and he's like well this is the thing but like i have all of these plans and my but my plans are they involve me having to do this kind of stuff for money you know and like it, it it's really this is this is what the greater good looks like dalen and he's like no i can't i can't take that da 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 um and you know like they have their big fucking fight on the ship right and have it be this whole thing where his whole thing his thing in the beginning was i want to get out you know away from this place even though i'm one of these bastards and i want to see the world i don't want to be caught underneath the thumb of the arch knights and have to deal with their bullshit all the goddamn time. And so he gets to catch a middle path. He fights Blackheart on the ship, learning techniques, a mix of techniques. He learned how to fight clean from Arik, who was his father's trainer when they were kids, and, like, trained him how to do, like, good, straightforward, clean sword fighting. And from him, he knows all of these high-level techniques and how to like deal with battlefields and read people. But from Blackheart, he learns the darker side of, of interpersonal conflict and even of fencing. So from him, he learns how to pocket sand and fucking use his like cheating dueling gauntlet and stuff. And so at the very end, you can have this like two spirited thing, right? Dalen, the Dalen, the fucking Dalen the bastard, right? Who's got the sword, get, fuck, get rid of all the like heart bonded swords and shit you can have that be some aspect of like empowering the sword don't have just a stupid purple goddamn sword the the sword in his right hand that he uses to fight with for justice is the sword gifted him by Arik, which was his father's first training sword before he got rid of it for the blue the blue sword of the conqueror which is the coolest thing but on his left hand he keeps the 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 the, the gauntlet of his brother blackheart his first real friend, his first real, like, not my, my, my surrogate father mentor to remind him of, like, I can be not just a bad guy, but sometimes you do have to go outside the bounds of the law to get stuff done. And sometimes you have to cheat to win, and sometimes cheating to win is worth more than, than fighting with honor and stuff and blah, 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 blah. I think that's just like a fucking way better story, right? That's easy as shit. It's not even like something that hasn't been done before, but you can get everything that he wants to get across. You can get a little bit of the goofy ass fucking Mormon moralizing in there still. It doesn't have to necessarily be fucking kicked out, but you can still just get a fucking story across, have some pathos, and going from the first story to the second, you can do the fucking sunstone and the dark. And you can even have the, like, hose turn into fucking succubi if they get dark fucking shaded and they're SA victims, whatever. 
and like have the second book going into the people that are trying to bring his father back. And then, oh, that's what the shadow of the conqueror is. Really, he's a shade because he didn't die. He fucking went down into the crypts underneath the castle. And now he is the shade and he's coming back. And you are actually going to get the chance to meet your father, who is a more concentrated, evil, overarching shadow of somebody which fulfills also the metaphor of what it's like to be a son in the first place literally living in the literal shadow uh and figurative shadow of your father as these people who are these fucking cultists tried to bring him back boom there you got the second book set up during this you can introduce the lauren character who can be a cute girl in her like 20s or something who's a little too old for dalen who has like a big fucking puppy dog crush on her but, you know, if he's getting a little bit older, maybe they can, like, possibly have, like, a little moment as he trains between books. And then he's 23 and she's 25 or something. And it's less weird. You know, it's like, you know, I'm not the little kid. And then you have, like, a really interesting romance and stuff as he kind of, she contests with him becoming an adult. But she actually does have problems because fucking Day Daylist the Conqueror killed her parents. Or even beat the fuck out of her or like kept her as a slave and she was part of this slave trade thing. And so she's got all these things. She's like, I see your father in you, but I see something else. And then you can have that duality of man. And it's not in the fucking like underneath the fucking guise of it being, uh, hey, like everybody was fucking essayed. This is fuck this is the essay hour with fucking old 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 fucking little dick Dalen and and, and fucking Eric and all these other goofs. Man, you fucking really just punched me off the whole fucking world. And I think that would make a whole better book. That's that's two that's two books in a series. The second book can be about him literally doing it's just a ripoff of basically it's just fucking Star Wars Part 2, but still kind of similar, you know what I mean? It meets his dad, and then he finds out his dad is really dead and he'll never get to meet him here. Here's book 2. He fucking goes and he trains, right? And he is he becomes known as Dalen the Bastard, Lord of the Skies. How fucking cool is that? Look, Shad, if you're listening right now, I know you just popped a full fucking halfie on hearing that. He's out there. He's in the fucking skies, floating around, going around, and he is a pirate's pirate. He fucking literally is robbing the local governments and shit because he thinks a bunch of them are unjust. Uh, some of them are the ones that popped up after his dad was conquered. Whatever the fuck. That's what he do on a thing but he also you know goes and he breaks up these slave trading guilds and he he's a sort of kind of you know uh gray figure moral arbiter in this world that people don't know how to feel about and um he's got his own ship he's got blackheart's ship he's trying to kind of like fix all the stuff that blackheart did maybe blackheart gave him like a final mission you know like look i know uh, you literally stab like with my heart in his chest, Blackheart grabbed my shoulder the way he had so many times before and said just these last few words. The note, my, the note that you always saw me writing at night. It wasn't some love letter like I said to a girl in a distant port. It was just a goodbye to my sister, who was my half-sister to my mother. My mother never really liked me that much, but could you just deliver this letter to my half-sister for me? I want her to have it. And like... As he hands it to Dalen, his little bloody thumbprints left on it. So Dalen's always holding this last, like, objective from his brother, which he could fulfill at any time. But he feels like it's going to be let him really letting go of his brother. And he doesn't know if he wants to meet a half-sibling of somebody from his family and all that sort of shit. And the whole second one is him being this sky pirate and fighting one of the local governments as the cultists gain power. And then his dad does show up in the fucking second half of the book. And then he has to like ally with one of the, the arch knights who's also a female bastard of fucking, um, you know, whatever. It, it could even be the lady. That's like why they kind of have their on again, off again thing because she's a little bit older than him in an arch knight. And she's also kind of supposed to be hunting him, but also she doesn't really want to because she thinks he's a cutie. Or whatever the fuck. And she's like, uh, fucking I like you. And, and they have this like, you know, will they, won't they kind of deal going. And then he has to team up with her to go and storm the capital. And while he's doing that, her ship is destroyed. And she's forced to choose like, do I really want to be with the Arch Knights? Because I found out during all of this that they were empowering this cult. Oh no, all along. In order to, um, you know, 
set up um, set up this fake uh, this fake Dalis the Conqueror zombie guy as a, basically like a gigantic black flag in order to uh, gain power during this like fucking whatever transition war that's happening. And, like, she decides to stay with him, and he's defeated his father, but now he's found the final big bad, which are these these corrupt suborder of arch knights who are literally the most powerful people ever. And, like, he's got to go and, like, kind of use his authority as the fucking bastard and as also, like, try to fucking unite the Sky Pirates in book three. Fucking, you know, it's the, the shadow, the shadow of the Conqueror. Then we can have uh, the Shadow of the Conqueror, Stories of Everfall. Then we can have the the Rise of the Sun. Oh, that's so fucking corny. There you go. Book two, The Rise of the Sun, Chronicles of Everfall, book two. And then um, three, The Story's Setting. That's so fucking corny. The Story's Setting, right? His tail setting, whatever, whatever the fuck. Um... Uh, and then, like, that's the third one. And the third book is just him, like, being out there and, you know, having this, like, whole sub-government. I'm getting my ass kicked by these guys and just running around. I should have just said this stuff off stream. But uh, having this little sub-government of um, pirates and stuff that kind of work with him. And he's learning a lot of stuff about, like, you know, himself. Because now he has to contend with the fact that instead of just being... It's always what, you know, it's always kind of like, okay, or how to say this, it's always fucking, um, you know, like just him, when he's on his own, he can make all these decisions and stuff, but he, always, he actually has to contend with politics and people that have different ideals, and there's people that are like, hey, we're not going to join you because we are the Slavers Guild, and we fucking love doing slaves and shit, so, like, we're probably going to fucking ally against you, but we'd be your best fucking compatriots. And then he's like, do I want to make decisions like my dad did? Do I want to have this guy fucking assassinated so I no longer have to deal with his bullshit? And like, you know, this thing, that thing, this thing, that thing, and trying to figure out where all of it kind of, where all of it kind of leads. And at the very end, he does this big cumulative battle with all of the stuff that he's learned. And there you go. There's three books. Chronicles of Everfall. I wrote the whole thing for you. I'm the best. Fucking Tyler. Like and subscribe. I shouldn't have done that, but I did it anyway. I can't take the game seriously when I'm talking this much. Okay, I'm gonna look at the thing. Did, 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 did. Oh, hold on there, grown mid twenties woman. We don't want hags in the story. <laughs> okay, but Shad wouldn't like this version of his book because of the lack of essay. I feel like I would have him at like a table while he's like doing like notes reads and just being like, okay, but what if? Okay, now listen to me. What if? Um, instead of it being just normal slaves, what if it was child brides of, and I'm just going to say this, we'll call them the, the Carib people, and they're brown skinned, and they wear like turbans, and they have child brides, right? And he's just got to slaughter every last one of them. I'm like, okay, we can't do that, because that's fucking insane, Shad. Uh, but I'm going to meet you halfway, and we'll say that one of the girls will say... That something like that happened to her. I don't know if people will go for it, but uh, I think we could try. I think we could try. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's so stupid, but I feel like that's the vibe, right? <sighs> Motherfucker, you just wrote a better novel series than Shad in like 13 minutes. You guys should check out my real shit. I'm telling you, I fucking, I go hard. I write mad good. You're interested as fuck in that series now, aren't you? How pissed are you? How pissed are you that you're never going to see um, the Battle of Summerdown Landing where, where fucking uh, Dalen, the coolest guy you've ever seen, so he jumps off of one of these things and he knows his whole like light thing power is literally that it just blows up to the, to the left and right of him, so it's actually dangerous to use, but he can use that to kind of propel himself and he figures out that as he's jumping, he can start making these fucking explosions happen right in front of him if he times it right and slow his fall. And as he does, he jumps down, jams his fucking dueling thing into like the main mast, like and spins around at the main, whatever the aft mast is, the one that spins. He jams it in there and spins and fucking whap. And that's how he fucking like, that's how he ends up figuring out how to use his powers in like a combat way. And he kills, you know, um, 
Garabond teach the fucking leader of the the leader of the Aceron pilots. And they fucking oh, how about that? You never get to read that. You know why? Because it doesn't fucking exist. I just made it up. It's never gonna happen. You don't get to read that book because Shad already made a bad one. Get dunked on. <laughs> I think if he just made a history book of his world, it would have turned out way better. He did make a history book of his world. It's just narrated by the main character for fucking 18 hours. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's see. Oh, did I miss anybody, by the way? I hope you guys I hope you guys enjoyed that. I, I did talk for a little while. The Lich was a mass murderer and tyrant, but the heroes eventually defeated him and put him in. Pocket Sand is op. Pocket Sand is very op. Oh, Shep's out. Sorry, Shep. See you later, man. On the length of Shad's book, I think it's theoretically all right, but he seems to have difficulty stringing ideas and events together. Some chapters are only like six pages. Are they? I, I mean, that's absolutely true. I listened to it on Audible, so like I, I didn't always I, that the when they mark the chapter separations, I never actually keep track of them in my head. Uh, Ship says this might be surface level, but Shad seems torn between doing, using Dalen as a critique of everything he loathes socio politically. And as a firebrand self-insert mouthpiece for his socio-political beliefs. Oh, this is the perfect thing to say. Also, it finally hit me why your voice sounds familiar. You sound kind of like Owen Wilson. That I'm doing that on purpose. I'm doing... Oh, wow. Sometimes I talk like that. It, I do that to annoy my wife. I, I switch between voices. I think it's something to do with the brain damage I have. I can't help it. I will hyperfixate and start doing voices. Uh, people think I sound like Seth Rogen. That's the one I don't have any control over. Uh, Bill Burr, I get a lot. Um, and I got a few other ones. But I do voices on stream, too. But thank you. I, Owen Wilson's a good one. Chad has no self-awareness about how his book comes off. Self-awareness in general, absolutely true. Uh, the thing that gets me is Dalen's opening monologue is ostensibly self-loathing, but he keeps repeating his own titles like he enjoys his own infamy, so it comes off unrepentant. It's, it's absolutely true. It's like, yeah, it, it, the character is so fucking all over the place that, like... It is, it, it is definitely, it, in my mind, so I've, I, I used to be in true crime, right? I had to, I worked with true crime people, and so I've read tons of, like, you know, portrait of a serial killer type, like, manifestos and stuff. And his work, unironically, does sound like serial killer shit. And I'm not being, like, like e e egregious in, in this assessment or trying to be, like, uh, extra edgy or be mean to Shad. A lot of serial killers have, like, weird little pseudo-screed ideas like this that sound very similar. Like, you know, I couldn't help having to do what I did because, like, X thing. Like, I'm just this kind of guy. I can't help it. Like, blah, 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 blah. Like, of course I'm going to do this. And, you know, like, there's a lot of, like, women want it and, like, misunderstanding people in, like, a general way. Um, that I think... I think, unironically, that Shad might have a lot of, like, self-loathing or maybe even mildly mildly sociopathic tendencies, you know? I don't know why it was caused or anything, and I'm not even saying, like, that's a value judgment. Like, oh, Shad is a fucking serial killer. You heard it here first on the fucking Tyler livestream. Um, but, uh, ooh, hold on, sorry, I gotta kill this fucking dickhead. Um... But yeah, like... Yeah, how the fuck even? But yeah, a lot of the stuff that he talks about, it comes off like, I think really it is a self-insert character, because it's his... He doesn't... When he talks about the character with, like, his fucking little dude, you know what I mean? Um, and like, he's like doing his little choreography and stuff. There's no moment where you're like, oh, hey, are you going to talk to this guy about how this character is like a prolific rapist? Because it's cool you guys are doing choreography and stuff. But if she's the female character, I think she's supposed to be, um, she's this guy's rape victim. And it's just, this is a real weird, a real weird thing to be doing at all. And I, I think like there's a lot of stuff. Or he's like, I enjoy this, or like, I feel guilty about it, and I don't want to say it out loud. The whole vibe, there's, there's, there's a solution to it. You know what I mean? It's a little, it's like a fucking, what do you call that? It's like the lament configuration from, from uh, Hellraiser, where there's definitely some sort of answer to all of these issues, but I don't know exactly 
what it is, but I know it's bad, and I know it's creepy. Oh, I'm gonna get killed by this guy. Ah, oh, fuck. And uh, it's very strange. It's a very strange vibe in general to write all this stuff and not have the kind of like sense of self to pull it out because it's like this guy is literally repeating ad nauseum Shad's literal beliefs. You know what I'm saying? Like things that he would actually like say the way that he would say them. Like kind of like not using the voice of the character. So like that's that's strange. But then he's also saying this fucked up shit and doing this other fucked up shit. And it's like, Shad, are you trying to articulate, like, your own potentiality of salvation if you were doing this kind of stuff? It's a strange book, man. A very, very strange book. I would say, like, like literally I said, one of the most depraved things I've ever read. Because I think it's 100% unintentional, like, how fucking weird it is. Ah, fuck. Um... And you know, uh, fuck, I don't know what you know. I don't even know what to add to that. Okay, I fucking dodged that, but whatever, man. Damn it. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, Dalen's body is 17. I wonder if that's technically to avoid him being a potential pedophile. Uh, that was the vibe I got, and it was never... It was never acted on, because the second they did that, it was strange. But he does talk about his that age dick getting boners all the time that's a constant thing that comes up it's really hard to just bring up as a criticism because i don't want those words coming out of my mouth at all but like that's a thing that happens <laughs> multiple times he's just like yeah man oh it's crazy i don't know what to do about being so young and having all of these like issues <laughs> How I don't get that. God damn, I'm getting my ass kicked. I gotta stop talking so much. I don't know, Tyler. The way you describe it, this serial killer manifesto speaks to me. I don't want to eat the chocolate ice cream in the freezer, but it's calling to me and I feel compelled to. <laughs> she has one of those people who needs an actual friend who will critique him and help him grow as a person rather than the yes men he surrounded himself with. Yeah, and I think that kind of goes into this thing too. Is, you know, like some of the, all of the characters that exist around Dalis are characters that forgive him. Like, it, it is literally every character that is another main character is a character that forgives him or or acts in, like, a sense of forgiveness toward him, you know? Um, or, or at least, like, distant, like, acceptance of his existence despite his flaws. And, like, these, these themes of that kind of pop up. So maybe it, it is, like, a vibe of him just being, like... You know, I want, uh, I want some, like, level of acceptance for who I am kind of thing. And, like, I want to feel forgiven or just, like, comfortable for that kind of stuff. Because I have, like, little creepy thoughts. And, you know, as an evangelical type of Christian, even if they're Mormon, um, guilt is just a natural byproduct of my entire existence. Ooh. I'm not paying attention. You guys don't have it. When I'm paying attention, you guys can, it ain't fucking it. Get that block. Wink. She has one of those people who needs an actual friend who will critique it. Oh, I said that. Oz was doing that on his Night's Watch show. That's why Oz got fired. <laughs> Should I read Shad's book or Goosebumps? Goosebumps, fuck, man. Goosebumps is great. Goosebumps won't let you down. Goosebumps is a good book. Good book series. One of my friends who uh, from high school who almost got into... Uh, almost got into YouTubing. Had a great like little Goosebumps series that he just let fall off and never finished. Um, he was just like reviewing all of the Goosebumps books. Because he collected them. When he was a kid, he was like the lucky one. Oh, it's not... I killed it, so it's not going to throw that stupid fucking thing at me anymore. Um, he he, uh, he uh, collected all of the Goosebumps books, basically, that existed in the 90s when he was a kid. And so he was just reviewing them and, like, actually showing off the books from the 90s and stuff. And it was a great little series. But he, uh, he stopped. He stopped doing it. And then he just stopped making stuff at all. Well, he almost made... Uh, 
a Slappy the Puppet movie. Uh, which, like, with just, like, his friends that were still living in Cincinnati. And then he stopped making that, too. I did voice work for it, actually. I voiced the puppet. I'm kind of disappointed I never saw how it turned out. Exactly. Shad's main friends appear to be his employees, but look how he responded to Jack Saint lightly criticizing him. He melted down immediately. Oh, the dude definitely can't take criticism. I bet his house is one of those, like, not now, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Every time, like, there's something comes up. You really think this is the, uh, the moment for this conversation? I had a very bad day today. I was running around. It was raining outside. I got my, I got my fucking, my, my, my jerkin wet. <laughs> That's rough, man. I've, I've actually dealt with a bunch of other people like that. I can't really get into it. I don't think. Maybe I can, but it's definitely not the night for it. But I had a fucking uh, pseudo boss for a little while in the podcasting world who was an absolute piece of shit, and he was the same way, and he's a hyper right wing guy now, too. Um, and he was like a crypto bro, and he's like just on the fucking grift saying all that stuff. I think he's actually, he might actually be fucking friends with Shadowverse Day. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm talking about a major person, a seriously large creator in the uh in the podcasting space anybody that actually knows me from my time in there knows exactly what i'm talking about but he was just fucking like that he was miserable to work with call you up at three or four in the fucking morning drunk are you mad at me i feel like you fucking hate me uh i don't know what that is making jokes like you give him a small criticism <laughs> yeah yeah you know and then like later on like oh, i don't know why you had to say that in front of people i don't know if why, why you think that that's like I don't think that's a big enough an issue that it had to be brought up. <laughs> oh, what a fucking prick. He stiffed me for a lot of money. A lot of fucking money. That son of a bitch. It's too much of a pussy. Gambison. I, I I know it's supposed to be a Gambison. I can't ever remember. You guys will tell me that 10,000 times. I'm not... I don't forget... It's not a It's not a bit. People on, in my comments keep thinking, they're like, you're doing bits. Like, I get the bit that you're doing. Like, dude, I'm just... I don't have the fucking... Ram for that. I can barely play puppet game and talk. You think this is... I'm thinking this through? <laughs> this is... This is off the dome, man. I'm freestyling the entire fucking time. Uh, I can never remember it's a Gambison. I think it's... I remember the G-shape consonant in there, and I'm like, eh, it's a fucking uh, Garabond, which is a font family. The terms of the bargain almost intolerable. Hey, that's my friend. Well, it's not like I care about this hotel. Do you think Shad has bedded his wife while wearing the Gambison armor? I guarantee you he has tried to get her to dress up like Supergirl. That's a fuck. I, I put fucking money on it. Also, there was a bunch of conversa of, of, of things that uh, old Dalis had said where he was talking about how he was sick of prostitutes and he'd made the prostitutes dress up in certain ways. And I just wonder. Nothing I can say. There's nothing sure, but it's just, I don't know. I wonder. I wonder. The Give Yourself Goosebumps subseries is my first exposure to Choose Your Own Adventures books. Those went fucking unfathomably hard. If you want to begin to hate books, just try War and Peace. I don't... I didn't hate War and Peace, but I literally... I got filtered, so I didn't finish it. Uh, do -do 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 -do. <laughs> the Brigadine stays on. <laughs> I need you to lay there, okay? And then you're going to hold this sword like it's too heavy and it's pinned your arms against the ground. Oh, do 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 do. The only protection he's allowed to wear as a Mormon. At Westside Tyler, was it rags? I don't know exactly what you're asking that question. I wish I knew who you were talking about, but no better than to ask. It's all good. I'll bring it up at some point. Um, and it wasn't no. If, if that's your ask, it was not rags. Um, I don't know. I don't actually know who rags is. <laughs> Tyler, opinion on Mauler? I think I watched a few of his things, and he's like a uh, a ding a dingus, right? Like Mauler's lame. Uh, I don't know too much about him. Is Mauler okay sometimes? I think I might be mixing Mauler up with... With Razor Fist. Razor Fist is lame. Razor Fist is, like, corny lame. Like, I wouldn't... I wouldn't go to a party that guy was at, and if I arrived at one and he was there, I would fucking leave immediately. Because, of, like, this is not happening. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a guy that shows up. Like, I, I used to be a bit of a social butterfly in my time. I'm not, like, the most fun guy ever or, like, the coolest dude. 
but I, I got a vibe for a party. You know what I'm saying? And if you go there and like that dude's trying to fucking like lean up on the corner and shit, like the dude from Grandma's Boy, I'm out. That guy's like, hey man, you guys want to get out of here and go to a cool time? Like I'm not going to a 17 year old's house, dude. I know what a cool time. You're wearing aviator sunglasses in the middle of the night. I shall tell you something. I'm past this phase of my life. <laughs> They say yeah, I'm not going to some high schoolers house party with you, man. We're both in our 30s. That's fucking real weird. I have absconded with treasures from its lair. That's yeah. If Razor Fist, if Razor Fist never sees my channel, you can tell him I said he looks like a guy that goes to high school house parties. Dead ass. Off rip. Clip it. Clip and send. That guy's a fucking freak, bro. Show that Mahler does mostly media reviews. He got big for criticizing Disney Star Wars. Who fucking didn't? Mahler is a guy who's friends with all the soft alt-right dudes who makes the 10-hour video essays walking people through movies. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. Razor Fist is a shit name, right? Oh, absolutely. He doesn't have the physical stamina to wear the gambeson. No, he doesn't have the physical stamina to do anything. Shad couldn't make it in Baltimore? Oh my god, I couldn't imagine. I'm surprised, unironically though, he's like Australian. I'm surprised he could make it in Australia. He has to have left. I think I heard he moved to Canada, which makes more sense. But Aussies are so fucking based all the time. Like, I couldn't imagine finding out an Aussie was just like, <laughs> okay with him just fucking around. Oh, fucking Shed. Shed, you going on fucking sword fight again? <laughs> oh, look, fucking Shed's guy. He's going to the fucking Ren Fair in his backyard. I'm making him. I'm, I'm trying to make a movie. Uh, could you guys be quiet? Oh no, if I don't worry about us. Fucking footies on. We're out here for a fucking commercial, having a fucking ciggy. <laughs> Just enjoy the show. Do us a backflip then. <laughs> it's terrible. God bless my Australians in chat. I'm so sorry. It's not as funny as I'm laughing at. It's so stupid in my head though. I'm just thinking of a. I want to animate that like a big les, a big les show thing. You know, oh fucking, what's going on over there? Oh, it's fucking shit of this city. Fuck, <laughs> coming out here, he's gonna fucking sword fight with that tree. Why? <laughs> Why's he doing it? Got no fucking friends, mate. Yeah, hey, don't make fun of him, please. Got no fucking friends. I know fucking friends, Liz. Ah, uh, fuck. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm laughing at that. I think it's getting late. I think he's rural Australia, like over a drive to civilization. Oh, fair enough. It just looks like it gets cold wherever he is. I don't know. Australia gets cold, right? I don't know what you guys have as far as like snowy weather. I, I can't remember where Australia sits relative to like the tropics. I just thought it was always kind of like fairly temperate to just cool. Like I live in America where I, I've lived in North Dakota where it's like, you know, 15 feet of fucking snow places and shit. <laughs> Oh, sorry, Cherry said, uh, I think guys like Mahler would get a lot of reading and applying... We get a lot out of reading and applying more literature on film critique. He's not quite like Shad, who is just incapable of growth. No, that's, like, the thing, too. Um, that's my whole deal, which, I don't know. Hey, Cherry, you're bigger than me, obviously, and you've kind of been in these scenes more. But, like, one of my reasons that I started doing this stuff, even, was I just really didn't feel like... Uh, the film criticism stuff that I was hearing from people was particularly good on like really the right or even to a lot, like a larger degree, like the left and stuff. Like I would hear people like, Oh, that's a terrible criticism of this rightist saying dumb chud shit. I'm like, it is. That is in fact a dumb thing for that guy to say. But then they're like, because of like reason, 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 reason I'm like, no, but those, those reasons are not, no, don't say that. Like, that's not it. That's not it. I think it's mostly, it was a Xander Hall thing. I can't remember exactly what he was talking about. But I was just like, fuck, Xan, that's not, that's not the argument. You could have fucking smoked this guy in half. And I think it's just really like, you have to be at a certain level of well-read to kind of jump into those circles and really fucking dunk on people. And I guess I just am because I was a fucking book nerd and then I got an English degree and I spent the whole time I was in the Marines fucking reading random books that I could find. And so, like, I just know a bunch of shit now. 
What is this? Hold on a second. Temporarily increases fizz. What? So you can just hit more damage each time? That sounds fucking op, dude. Sorry. Do, 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 do. do you guys remember that Predator movie where the aliens try to steal a little boy's autism to save their planet? <laughs> Penguin Zero said it was funny. What the fuck is this? <laughs> What the fuck was the sentence you just wrote? Hold on. Hey guys, remember that Predator movie where the aliens try to steal a little boy's autism to save their planet? Penguin Zero said it was funny. What the fuck is his humor? Was that... Are all of those words correct? Is that a, re, is that a real thing? Is that the Predator movie I missed? <laughs> what? What? What the fuck does that mean? That's amazing. You reminded me of an awkward video of his I saw. He did he like did a Fruit Ninja IRL collab with some normal people and then sat them down and made them handle swords for like 20 minutes. <laughs> oh no. That's miserable. Michael, what the fuck is that film called? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Tyler, can you tell us when the book selling stream would be? Uh, yes, I will. Because I, the second I have all the physicals in my hand and I can be like, hey, this is a thing and like read out of them and have a nice like have my face on stream with the fucking book and do some excerpt stuff. I'll do it then. Zan has good intentions. There's a background that you need to approach art in certain ways. It's not hard to acquire, but it's not intuitive either. Dan Olson is good YouTube friend. Great. Yeah, Dan Olson's really, really solid. No, and it's not like uh, it's not like I'm fucking like oh, I fucking Dan. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> ten hour, ten hour Xander Hall takedown stream. All right, hey, I, like I'm about to hit 500 subs here, uh, maybe over the night. It's time to release my Xander Hall is not your ally video. Okay, I'm fucking done fucking around in the small leagues with Shan Diversity. I'm trying to fucking pop off on the left. All right, I gotta say Xander Hall. Fucking kicked my dog in 92, I swear to God. And they're like, that kid wasn't alive, man. He's in his 20s. I'm like, people are in their 20s. They're fucking alive in the 90s. Shit. No, no, no. I get it. I get it. Like, he's not trying to do anything, you know, wrong or anything. I think there's just a place for somebody, me specifically, um, to just do, like, more in-depth uh, film criticism type stuff. And art, art shit, you know? Because it's, like, it's my bag. Every time I've tried to step out of it and do standard politics stuff, even my audience is like, hey, maybe stop doing that. And uh, we want to hear, like, your opinions on this random weird thing. Like, can you guys, can you just, like, go and look at random high fucking quality art from the 1800s? Okay. And like, yeah, I'll, I'll check that out. And then they like that I'm instead. So that's what we do. Hmm. I don't remember. Time to farm drama, dude. People. I got to sow them seeds. Thank her. The movie's just called The Predator. It was released in 2018. Oh. Huh. Mike, I thought you had better. Is that the one with George? It's the one that's not the successful director. The other one from Key and Peele. Is that? That's Key. That's right. That's Keegan Michael Key. Sorry that if you ever watch this stream, bud. I know you're like way bigger than me. But that's how I remember you. <laughs> that's actually pretty fucking mean. Um, to do. We all know that Vosh bad. Vosh is bad. Tyler is the goat. Oh God, let him know. So I um, oh, dude, I want to fuck. That's like one of my one of my dream impersonations because he's got a hard voice to do. Is fucking the Voosh. You would think like fucking XQC is hard, but XQC is super fucking simple. Just fucking you. Just, you just basically do Donnie from the the Wild Thornberries, but you try to throw some fucking Quebecois in there. Come on, man, what the fuck. Look, we gotta fucking get. Again with this. Again with this. I don't know. I can't fucking read chat. I can't fucking read it. Chat. Fuck. Tell me what the fuck. Okay. If you're going to put it, if you're going to put it on one, and you're going to put it on two, then why the fuck would it not be on three as well? Chat. Come on. Tell me. Chat. Why? Why is it? Why is it? Tell me. Chat. Why the fuck is it? Why the fuck is it? Okay. I'm bugging off. <laughs> it's just like every time I've heard him, that's just what it sounds like. Vosh goes through like a series of different accents every time he talks. What's up, bud? I fucking love your. I love your whole thing. We're friends. Oh, you fucking poised it. Ah! Oh, shit. Hold on, man. I gotta turn my foot. I gotta... Hold on. I gotta... Oh, no! I got a thing. 
I've got a, I've got a thing to turn myself off fire. I've just got to fall off this whole platform first. But you know what you're talking about? Like, Vosh has, like... Yeah, so I, I, I was just, like, thinking of this thing. And, of course, you know, uh, who doesn't like a horse? And then... But when he, when he starts talking uh, to somebody, he's like, well, do you really think that that's the way that you should be um, addressing this, even? Because what I feel like is, um, if, you, if you think about it, and you get a little bit blah, 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 and so he, he, he fucking rapidly goes between those two. And as much as I fucking have listened to the guy talk, I really cannot get the pattern down. It's kind of, it's like weird. It's both hyper iconic and hyper uniconic. <laughs> you fucking knocked me out of that? This guy's dangerous. Oh, there you go. Technique. All right, give me the fucking smash. I'm sorry, guys. Actually, got, I got fucking stomped there. I'm talking way too much. Let's see. Did, 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 did. As a Koboka, I can say that you missed it a bit. Fair enough. <laughs> Your XQC is bad. I can actually understand the words you said. <laughs> uh, Chariot, I'm on a big... Uh, did, did, did. Chariot is a YouTuber too. Yeah, Chariot's way bigger than me. Chariot's like a, like a, a 15k uh, person. Like cool, like welcome to the stream, individual with clout. <laughs> oh, I'm saying, could I, could I offer you the clout couch? Would you, <laughs> would you like to kick your feet up? Can we get you a drink? Uh, da -da -da -da. video essay is the thing I love, so it's nice. I'll check. I do not like to defend Arch, but Vosh is one to talk. If he says Arch fakes his accent, who says that? <laughs> One of these days, I will debate Vosh on utilitarianism and make my philosophy professors proud. Vosh has interesting opinions on CP. Oh god, don't, no, no. Only 8k, but we're climbing. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were, I thought you were like, I don't know. Why did I think you had like 15k? Either way, fucking congratulations. 15k soon, like tomorrow. You're on your way. My opinion of YMS is his views on movies are too negative, driven for views, and his criticisms fall into nitpicks. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Um, some of YMS's stuff is, like, pretty solid, and some of it kind of isn't. I really like it. I think that I can always tell because I vastly prefer his uh, reviews of negative stuff to his reviews of positive stuff. Most notably was his, like, endless... Endless fucking review of Synecdoche, New York, which I don't know if he ever finished. I just remember being like, wait, he's still releasing pieces of this? Wait, is this not over yet? And it was like, I think like fucking eight hours or something in, and he was talking about it, not even like frame by frame, like fucking... It was, it was just excessive, I guess is the only way to say it. Damn it, I couldn't get that. Who is Arch, by the way? Still, if you do it, don't call it out, he's a hypocrite. Am I miss I think I'm missing people's comments. Now am I, I'm just like, I, I just want to fucking start yelling at Leod and just like ban him from the community for daring to say that my fucking XQC impersonation wasn't 100% perfect. Just get full fucking, just shat it up. Get shat it up in this B. I talked so much today. I can literally barely pay attention to this puppet game. I'm gonna have to like reward myself. I might have to stop playing games this difficult on stream, which I really don't want to do because then I won't have to. I won't be able to play games anymore. Damn. I guess you really can't like 
double those up and like block them all. It's a pain in the butt. Arch Linux, by the way. <laughs> I'm gonna assume Arch Warhammer. Arch Warhammer sounds familiar. Hey, why didn't I get the clout recognition? Checks lack of followers. All right. Oh, I was like, wait, wait, Lead, you fucking, you a beast? Lead, you're like big on Instagram though, right? Don't you have like a bunch of Instagram followers? Arch, formerly Arch Warhammer, is a Warhammer 40k YouTuber sent a cease and desist by Games Workshop because he's a fascist who unironically believes the Imperium man of man is good and has terrible ideas. That's amazing. Tyler, do you want to see Arch in one of his vids? I deserve it. You know what? Yeah, how about this? I, I, I'm not paying attention to fucking puppet game. I've been on one level the entire time. I'm going to turn this off. I'll watch one quick video if it's quick. And then I'll probably wrap it up for the night. <sighs> Shadow of the Conqueror, man. I like, I fuck it. My brain was just absolutely jellyfied by that fucking, that book. I swear to God. I passed my criticism of it. Like a fucking kidney stone. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Um, only bunny face output. There we go. Hey, Shep's back. You're back just in time for me to get ready to shut this thing down. Let me see. Arch Warhammer. Let's just see what he's like. YouTube.com Arch War. Hammer. How does how does a guy do it? Hello, where is the Discord link? Oh, I'm so sorry. Jana y Jawa do Sacramento. That's Jana y Jawa from Sacramento. I'm sorry, if you're in the, the thing right now, it should just be in the actual like description of the live stream. If you're not here, may may my wings my words be carried on the wings of angels to your ears. I don't know how you're gonna find out otherwise arch uh, at arch youtube okay yeah let, there we go let's see what does this guy sound like ah man too long too long 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 all right what's a good one let's watch the shad video about movie on his book maybe at some other time oh please watch a little arch tyler but too much not too much it's brain brainless money. I can't watch Arch the way he repeats himself, the long pauses between sentences, and the, I think, fake-ass rolling of the R's are a way to pad the runtime of his videos. Okay, guys, you, let me just get a couple seconds. We're, oh, it's me, too. I get more, I get bored faster than anyone in chat, so I, I have fucking Monkey D. Luffy levels of attention span. If it's actually, like, boring, I'll, I'll be fucking out before you guys get bugged. Hold on, let me see. What are Elder Vampires? The War for Badab. Siege of Rax. What, what is the War for Armageddon? What's a good one? What, what's, what's, let me, let me get a cringe. What's a cringe? The Death Corpse of Kreeb, the Necron. His dumbass over exaggerated British accent. Oh no, British, British. Oh no. It's like, with all due respect to Brits, I think you guys put on, if there's any in chat, you guys put on the fucking fake accent harder than any other person or any other Anglo speakers, like, in the known universe. This one's the shortest. We're just going to check this one out real quick. Go! Oh, that hit me. That hit me hard. That, I think I almost bled. My nose almost bled. He fu that, that's a bad accent. Go, ratings and scientists. It's like getting lemon in your eye, but for your ears. What the fuck? Intentions, friends, and welcome back to the War for Badab. How are you all liking <laughs> it so far? You've only seen a I'm never. I don't need fucking smelling salts at the gym ever to try to hit a PR. That just fucking. <laughs> that just fucking got me, man. <laughs> that's not real. That's that's not real. All portion of all of the custom. Hey, look, it's Zoro back here. What I've had created for this project, I also offer up all of the artworks as little bonuses to my Patreon supporters as well. So if you are a Patreon or okay, so no, that's a hard no. I'm so sorry. 
I am so sorry. That is the hardest no. The hardest no. I, I, I love that is like, hey, when we hit 500 subs and I can take you guys can pay me. You could pay me to do that. That is not free. Holy fuck. You guys, I thought you guys were fucking just like, hey, man, it's for, it's for the jokes. It's for the lulls. We're just kidding around. It's not that bad. Holy fuck. I got to like, that got me. That hit, that, hit a, that hit a piece of me. Like, I got, I got fucking tea to make like sweet tea with. I might go throw some bags of that shit out into the fucking aqueduct like two blocks away from me just to like get my fucking, like the American in me. This is fucking, like, now I know why we fucking kicked you out of this country. Did you imagine hearing somebody like that tell you got to pay taxes? God damn. That's not fucking real, man. Oh no, it's a British TV voice. That shit hit. That hit like a fucking ice pick. Sounds like he got Earl Grey blowing through his veins. <laughs> Mika, if you want to suggest one that I, I, I could try to dig in, but fuck, dude. Fuck. No, Mika, I can't hear you. You're just text. When you type, if I'm not looking at the screen and it vanishes, I can't see anything you're saying. I like British accents, so I'm biased. I don't mind British accents. I don't like the fake British accent, the received pronunciation, and then like the approaches to it. It it sends me up a wall. Um, it, it's like sometimes I get it and it's funny because like I I, I, I like it's like uh, like it's Monty Python, you know? And they're like, I'm doing it to just sound as fucking ridiculous as I can. Oh, you 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 come like this dressed before the High Council, you know that shit. That okay, I get it. But the, the YouTuber variant of this, every, I swear to God, it is nails on a chalkboard. It, I, I don't know. I don't know how you take it. I didn't even turn it on. I'm so sorry. Uh, all you can see is just, it's just a static image. I think it's an AI image. Or no, it's just, it's just fucking Wizards of the Coast shit. You know what I mean? It's just this. Oh, whoops. I don't even have it down there. I was I was like testing it before I even wanted to try to get into it. So we got it's just this right here. Ba-doop. That it, bud. Oh, whoops. I got the fucking wrong screen up anyway. All right, one more chance at fucking Arch Warhammer ever. And if it's not if it's not literally perfect, it can't happen. It can never happen. <laughs> Damn. I can't believe you did that to me. Fucking trigger warning. I stepped away for three minutes. It's that that is an iconic voice. I will say that. Arch talks like a 15th century sponsor of Shakespeare, who thinks Africans are a different species. He he rolls his R's like a measure head. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> My man, my man rolls his R's with the quality of a person that owns more than one set of calipers. <laughs> uh, Mika, I keep seeing you post stuff, but like, you're not telling me what the vid is, man. Did you actually put it in the discord? Tyler, you must see this. Did you behave yourself and put it in the fucking Discord? Oh my god. Oh my god, you did. I feel in part like I'm pounding a dead horse here, but when the That's the only thing you've been pounding with that face, buddy! Oh, fucking bullied! I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for you. Remains it is until the equine carcass decides to heave itself onto its- Why is his shirt crooked? You're looking at a fucking camera, man. Do you not have a screen up to show you that your fucking shirts aren't crooked? And vomit forth the pustane truth? We might as well listen, I guess. As the cast members of the Rings of Power, the, they are they're not interested in giving you a Lord of the Rings story or doing anything with J.R.R. Tolkien's universe. They're interested in claiming it and stamping the Amazon logo on as large a portion of it as possible. Which is why they only have the rights to the appendices and yet they're talking about how to make Isildur's fall the origins. 
together with a couple of the actors that we'll be going through just to hammer home the point even more thoroughly. Sophia Nomvetti says her character in the upcoming Lord of the Rings series is the face of a neck. Yeah, I can't. I can't. I can't do it. I, I, li I can't. <laughs> fucking do it i can't look at that voice coming out of that face and take this fella seriously i mean i know that's mean but my dude's got a fucking hairline that starts on the back of his head his his shirt isn't on all the way he he looks like if you had like if you squeeze a little toothpaste out of the tube but you like were shaving and you got hair on it that's like that's the general vibe of of arch warhammer and then it talks to you in a voice that you would think toothpaste would talk in that i can't i'm so sorry guys i can't fucking do that i can't listen to fucking i, I was like trying to skip like can we get to a part where there's a video and he's reacting and i know i can listen to fucking oh Ooh. i just listened to 18 hours of shadowversity shadow of the conqueror for you guys Okay, you can't ask more of me, and that's fucking a lot to ask. God damn. Whew. I'm shaking my head. Go on Discord. You guys say you guys say it's in the Discord. RP is fine as dialect. I switch to it sometimes to hide lisp and stutter, but it's worth saying that the rolling of R's and whatever is very much not RP dialect, just posh accent. Ah, oh, sick. All right, fair enough. Equine caucus. Oh, whoa, holy shit. I said it the way you spelled it out, and I fucking got it, actually. I like his accent. I guess I'm alone here, Lil. Like, have you ever had, like, a... Have you ever angered a witch who stole into your house in the middle of the night and stabbed your ears out with fucking knitting needles or something? Like, how the fuck do you like the way that sounds? <laughs> his head is always that level of emo. Bro, I can't. I can't. I can't with... You, you have to send me... It has to be gold. Spun, pure spun gold. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh. Uh, sorry, you, you felt like Sisyphus trying to get me to watch that. I felt like Sisyphus, Sisyphus uh, uh, watching it. Uh, to really embrace absurdity, you must believe that Sisyphus enjoys watching <laughs> the fucking Warhammer Chud, whatever his name is. Arch Warhammer. That is the, that, that's how you truly embrace absurdity. Unfortunately, I can hear it. This, 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 this absurdity cannot be embraced. I am going to have to be ending the stream here uh, very shortly. I will talk to chat for just a second, but then I'm going to have to get off and get up. Uh, Mika, is this the vid Eric made fun of? It looks like his father was a hockey player, got picked in the 45th round. <laughs> you can hear the way he's talking with the back of his throat slightly constricted almost a nasally sound I don't want to try to do it why are his eyes facing opposite directions were they oh that's amazing I can't I can't I don't want to click, click it on YouTube I'm going to actually start playing something. hey no bald shaming it's okay like yeah being bald is fine but, like, having a ridiculous haircut is having a ridiculous haircut, you know? Like, a lot of people look great bald. My hair goes back a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Not, you know, I know this is, like, you know, I got this not great, not pullable, wavy uh, hair that's all still nice and dark and, and thick into my mid-30s. <laughs> but I'm talking shit. But, like, so like if you, like, my man has the Don Corneo. You know, do you guys know who Don Corneo is? Hold on. Don Corneo. Right? Images. So if you've got if you've got this haircut, right, that's just a goofy fucking haircut. Am am I am I crazy? This is this is Arch Warhammer's fit. Actually he's dripped out compared to Arch Warhammer. But this is my dude. You got that little that little tuft. <laughs> Actually, I'd be fucking watching the shit out of this guy roll his R's. Um I, and I it's not I'm not making fun of Anything other than the goofiness of the way that that haircut looks, because it's all the way up on top of his head, so this fucking top of his head looks like it's an additional six feet long. He looks like a tube person, like he was squeezed out of some sort of mold. That that's 
that's on him. I, I could I didn't do that. I didn't fucking I wasn't I did not walk into the barber with him and like, hey man, here's ten bucks. Fuck my man's shit up. Ruin him. Get a beanie, bro. All the rest of the chuds are fucking rocking beanies. You can get like Tim Cast right there. Dude, that would be a fucking hilarious, hilarious gift. Well, for me, but like I'm not I can't give it to myself. It'd be a Tim Cast beanie. I could find it though. A stolen Tim Cast beanie, like literally ripped from the head of the man himself. I would wear that every stream. That voice comes from a man whose larynx can't abide curry. Shut the fuck up. Stop being mean. Uh, yes, I'm cursed to love cursed accents. It's fine. Regarding your earlier question, Arch is Norwegian. Wait, what the fuck? So he's from Norway doing a fake British accent? Insanity. Insanity. I want people... Abandon Britain. All right, this is one of my last thoughts for the night. Abandon Britain, other Anglo speakers, okay? And embrace American. And not like a normal American newscaster accent. When you try to sound authoritative on the internet from now on and you're not like a native English speaker, just start affecting like a West Virginia or like an East Texas accent. Just start getting on the internet and be like, I just need you all to know when you, the war hammer, this time I war hammer 40K. <laughs> Blood for the blood God, you better goddamn believe it. Corn and the things that he has done or about it. <laughs> Now on to everybody's favorite uh, chaos god, um, the hot one that you can have demonic fucking bang bang with. That's that's what I want from everyone now. I, I, unironically, if I ever get one of my uh, my little fantasy books published, I don't even know if really the accents are like uh, hyper American fucking like southerny type, you know, lilted accents. But that's how I'm gonna do it. Everybody in the films gonna be like, "Is this what you thought of me the whole time?" <laughs> It'll be monstrous. Get off, but it's nine and 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 what? What? Tyler, I've sent you another gold on your Discord. Please, one video tonight. No, sorry, Mika. I actually do have to go to bed. It's fucking like almost midnight. Um, as a follically challenged man, there's a point at which one should shave their head. Yeah, yeah. So you got the point is um where Bruce Willis was. At like the early 90s. You know how you, know, you always think of Bruce Willis as bald? If you watch some of the movies from like the early 90s before he was, you're like, it's time to go. Because it's like 17 hairs right up the And they're all long and like kind of like yeah, perfectly over there. You got that little poof, that little whisper of hair left. Or just like one of those really bad hairlines where you've got the long hair and you just look like a serial killer. Because you've got the like pate baldness and then like the fucking crazy Oh, then, then again, you could roll. If, like, you're going for an effect, I think you have to have some intentionality other than trying to hide the fact that you're bald with your with your hair. I think that's the only thing that looks kind of goofy. No, British accent is the best. Unless we're talking Texas's accent. Which one's better? Texas. Texas accent every fucking day. No, we can't watch any vids tonight. I've already done too much work. I'm sorry, Mika. You have to come in tomorrow. Tomorrow is probably going to be a vid day. Slanesh, yes, Slanesh, thank you, Slothin. Leah Goldberg, no nut, no man. Oh, shut the fuck up. You can't steal Tim's beanie, it's attached. There's a video of somebody stealing his beanie, and I fucking love that person. Not for just, like, stealing it from, just for, like, the balls to steal it, and then, like, you know they have it, and, like, people come over their house like, like, no. Yeah, that is. It is? It is. Fifth Element, Bruce is ready to wax and shine, but he's still holding on. Yeah, I think Fifth, Fifth Element's probably one of the last ones. I go with the Emperor at least, then I could have a normal life. I'm good. I like the uh, I like the Costanza. I don't like I don't think like male pattern baldness is anything to be ashamed of. By the way, and I, I say that as a fucking I'm Chad splaining it because I, I still have all my hair, but I think it's fine. I can't go bald. Because I had to have a bald head when I was in the Marines. And I have the, the horrible lines. You can't see them and you never will. But I have the little divots in the top of my head. So I can't even go clean bald. I got a fucking old, I got a old fucking wrinkly ball sack head. I got to hold on to this shit or I'm fucked. It's fucking, I, I, I'll have to go fucking beanie. Some people got perfect bald head. 
Vsauce, money. I want one Vsauce with hair. Fuck that. Anthony Fantano, not bald. Get out of here. Unacceptable. <laughs> okay. I'll, 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 you guys are going to fucking stun lock me into just talking to you. God bless. We're going to end this. Hey, if you're here up the, at the very end of this extremely long, extremely involved, extremely mean to a certain person who deserved a little bit of meanness to be, had, to, to be sent his way uh, video, and you haven't liked or subscribed yet, what the, hey, man, come on, stop in, pop by, hang out with us. Again, we're not done with the Shad Chud bashing, but also that's not the only thing that we do here. And I forgot to mention at the top of the show, one of the biggest things for this community is not just to dunk on artists, but also to support art. You should consider joining our Discord if you like to make stuff, if you like to draw, if you like to paint, do any sort of art, if you like to make music, audio engineering, anything like that, animations, video games, please consider joining our Discord and sharing your stuff with us. I'm starting to host, I think I can get it going, weekly art challenges. This week's art challenge is called Low Poly. You just have to draw some complex thing freehand, but only do it using polygons and make it look three-dimensional and make it look as uh, obvious and like holistic as you can without um, using too many polygons. So I think that would be a really fun thing for a lot of people. It's a fun challenge. Some of the upcoming, sometime in a couple months from now, I'm going to have my next contest, probably a couple weeks, I meant to say. In a couple weeks from now, we're going to have our next contest. The contests are for prizes or money. Um, the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the prizes are going to get. Um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm literally going to be paying people to make random art not for me you're going to be making it for yourself for the stream for each other kind of just trying to do whatever it is based on these challenges our last one was just uh literally it was called 17 eyes actually leads in chat i'm about to send out that book to you tomorrow uh Leod, who is in chat right now actually won the last contest um there's going to be a bunch of rules and stuff uh that are available for that but if you are if you're interested in art contests drawing, painting. If you want to just learn how to make yourself uh, improve at your craft, there's a ton of people at all varying skill levels. So don't feel like you're going to get in there and everyone's going to be like, hey, chill out, buddy. Have you ever read the Loomis method? Why don't you check that book out before you come back? It's going to be pretty fucking chill. If I find out anyone's being a dick like that in my fucking Discord, I'm going to kick them out because it's my Discord. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the current one right now is low poly, so you should go check that out. It's discord.com slash whatever the link is in the episode description hopefully it still works i don't i think i had like a limit of 100 people on there i don't think 100 people joined the discord tonight but but that may have happened so we'll, we'll figure that out i am going to probably hit fucking 500 subscribers before i wake up so when i when, when i realize i'm at 500 and then i look at my stuff i will be turning off the 500 goals so at that exact point i will Cut off the poll. If you don't know, there's a poll for our 500 uh, sub celebration. I am either going to be making an Asmund Gold stake <laughs> on stream, uh, um, doing viewer speed challenges, doing viewer dramatic reads slash impression challenges, or reading some chunks of uh, unreleased content that I have written on stream. I'm really good at reading stuff. It's like what I actually do professionally when I'm not here i i do voiceover well not really voiceover voiceover work but you know i i, I read for podcasts specifically mine which is where i make most of the money from um and so I, i'm pretty decent at that so you should come out and check that out if you want if you want to vote in that you have to hurry up and do it before we hit uh 500 subs we have only 11 left also if you get into the discord before we hit that 500 sub goal then you can still get the um Roll for streams day ones. After that, you're going to be a stream day two or something other. I don't know. Some sort of non hipster cred loser. And I don't, I fucking hate that for you. So fix that now. VOD gang, you might be too late. I hope you aren't. But in any case, I still love you for being here at the end anyway. Shout out VOD gang. Um, tune in for tomorrow for, I can't remember what the fuck I had on the docket. I was really just trying to get this Shadowversity shit out of the fucking way. I might just take some video requests tomorrow. I will wake up. I will think about things and I, I, I will I will let you all know so that we can get in here and get it going. The next big goal is going to be a thousand and after that it's going to be ten thousand. 
all the way to 10,000. Fuck 5,000. All the way to 10. We're going to get it. It's going to be great. And you guys are going to be here along for the ride with me. I hope. I really enjoy this community. I really enjoy talking to you. Even some of you irritating fucks that keep asking me to watch goddamn videos all night. Ah! <laughs> with all that said, thank you all so much for tuning in. Again, my name is Tyler Bell. You can learn more about me at westsidefairytales.com, Westside Fairy Tales Horror and Dark Fiction Podcast, long running horror and dark fiction podcast, free online, everywhere you can get your podcast. Check that shit out. When you watch that motherfucker, I get money through ads. And that it helps me buy second monitors so that I can get my shit pushed in on fucking puppet game while trying to talk to you, goofy goose. Yeah. And um, yeah, I love you guys. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I can't stop seeing Aaron as a guy who comes to check you to stop fapping. What a Chad. Why do I even look at Chad? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, with all that said, yes, this is the end. Remember to like and subscribe before you leave, just like Dan the Man says. And uh, with all that, until next time, as always, stay safe out there. <laughs> <laughs>